Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Bonnie Nicklin and I'll be providing assistance during today's meeting. Before we start, I'd like to review a few housekeeping items so the public audience knows how to participate. Your microphones have been muted to reduce background noise during this public meeting. There will be specific times during this meeting when the following options will be enabled to allow members of the public to participate. The first way is by typing the question into the question section at the bottom of the GoToWebinar interface. Those items will be read into the record by a meeting organizer at the appropriate time. The second way is by clicking on the raise hand option. A meeting organizer will announce the speaker and unmute their audio, at which time the speaker should state their name for the record. Before speaking, please take steps to minimize any sources of background noise and speak clearly into your device during allotted time. I will now turn over control to the Executive Director Michael Simon and CRA Advisory Board Chair Anthony Barber will be presiding over today's meeting. Very good, Board Chair. If you'd like to take the uh, run of the agenda, uh, Board Chair, and I will uh, take quietly until we get to the item. It says you're self-muted. We're going to go ahead and call order uh, with the roll call. All right. All right. Uh, Alan Hendricks. A present. <laughs> All right. Anthony Barber. Here. Belene Gordon. Here. Thomas Devlin. Here. Sharon, sorry, I'm going to screw up your last name. Gersivic. <laughs> Gersivic. <Gersevic. Gersevic. laughs> Thank you. Here. Angela Cruz. Present. And Aquanet Thomas. Aquanet here. Here with all members present, you have a quorum. Thank you. All right, we're going to move to item number three, uh, approval of the agenda. Um, are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to the uh, agenda? None from staff, board chair. All right, let's go ahead and drop, uh, adopt the uh, agenda. I move a motion to adopt the agenda as is. Second. All right, any opposed? All right, all in favor? Yes. Hi. All right. All right. Move forward to number four. Um, there's nothing for. There's nothing for number four, correct? Correct. All right. And number five, is there anyone who would uh, like to be heard on public comment? And these, for those in the audience, this section of public comment would be for items that are not related to the agenda items that will be discussed later in the uh, in the later in the agenda. All right. So there's no public um, comment. Hold on one one second, uh, board chair. We have a, a hand raised. Uh, Bernard Wright uh, has his hand raised. Uh, Mr. Mr. Wright, you're self muted. If you can unmute yourself. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Can you hear Good evening. evening. Uh, how you doing, Mike? Good thing. How are you? Everyone. Let me ask the question about uh, I don't know if this is on the agenda or not, but uh, I hear. And I've been speaking about this name changing you know, of the Wells Landing Apartments LLC project down the Martin Luther King, uh, Robert E. Wells Carter. Uh, can y'all give me some feedback on that in respect to you being the CRA board, advisory board? Anyone out of the advisory board had anything to do with trying to come and undo what has been done through a lot of effort and a lot of labor having to do with culture and history and legacy? If you do not know, the legal ramification of changing a name that had to do with an approval to get in here to get a project, 
I don't get no money out of this, man. It doesn't pay my bills, but it does give my family honor. And to disgrace and dishonor my family after giving me the honor to name the project, and you did not accept the name, but yet offered me to name it after my family, and I approved of it, and you did approve that project to come down that street with all the history that it has. Anyone to come up now and say, this is a people's project. No, this wasn't a people's project. It was a project for the people that I instrument getting in here. However, I don't like the way the Ocean East Breeze East have gone. No one has ever thought about changing that name. It has nothing to do with us and our culture here in District 2, the heart of Boyden Beach. Now, I just want to say this. With all the power and the resource I got after having been consecrated a bishop and as a member of the NWCP and all the resources I got, bro, if y'all try to change this name, you know, bring a division that would be for generations to come, families against families, believe me, please take that as advisement. I could not rest assured with peace that anyone on that dais would be making effective decisions for my family in a city I was born and raised in and my great grandfather had to do with founding. Let me explain something to you. You could not live in here, I couldn't live in here to God be the glory. Not peacefully, how can we? It's causing a few unnecessarily when we should be thinking about the equity in people in District 2 getting into Wales Landing that they didn't get into Ocean Breeze East, come up with the programs to upgrade their credit rating. And you know, HUD, 70% of any development in a city, there's 70% for that rent, rental. I don't know if you all let the people know this or not, but it sure ain't got nothing to do with them not being able to pay their rent when HUD is going to carry 70%. So what I'm saying now, I'm just about this right now. Keep that name as it is. I have a petition with over 200 signatures. If you can get 201, majority rule and win. However, if I need to get 1,000, I will. Now, let me explain something to you all, for real. I don't know if you all been listening to me in these last eight years, but I trust you'll listen to me now. To God be the glory. I'm about change for the better for the people. I'm not in affiliation with no party, Republican or Democrat. I'm for the people and what's right. To God be the glory. Now, I've spoken because this is a serious issue for anyone to be coming up talking about changing the name of a project. I had, I mean, I worked so hard in getting this developer in here, though he had the last say. But guess what? Everyone's standing right now, you know, for litigation if it comes to that. I just want y'all to know where that man is not a threat, it's not a promise. We're talking about my life and my legacy, man. To God be the glory. Bless God. More to say and much more to say, but in the future if necessary. Next we have uh, Susan Oyer with the public comment. Susan, you are self-muted. Okay, thank you very much. Susan Oyer, 140 Southeast, 27th Way. I wasn't able to access the agenda, so I do not know if this is on there or not. But I wanted to say, first of all, how beautiful Ocean Avenue is with all the beautiful holiday lights. So I think it's great the CRA is working with the city to, um, you know, make Ocean Avenue beautiful. But like others have um, noted at the last commission meeting, there used to be lights up and down MLK. And I think we need to go back to doing that. And I think we need to start lighting up Seacrest. And, um, I think this is something that CRA could be tackling with the city so that we can make our city beautiful as um, I don't know how many of you have been around long enough. I think I know Alan and Tom have been to remember when the CRA did that survey a, a couple years ago and um, there was all that discussion about what the businesses wanted and what the residents wanted and you will if you haven't seen it you should ask them to take a look at it. One thing our business is. Oh, sorry. Okay, not that one. <laughs> no. Somebody keeps muting and unmuting me, and that's not me. So. Um, You're fine. Thank you. We 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 got we you, you, we didn't miss much. Thank you for this couple okay. seconds. Okay. So I just wanted to you know throw in that I think maybe the crab board should be investigating the cost to look at relighting MLK like it used to be in years past. There used to be lights on the poles and then there were lights stringing across the street at the major key intersections. And 
But I think that would go a long way in making M the MLK area beautiful, but also we should be doing Seacrest like we used to have a lot more lights up and down Seacrest. And again, that's the number one issue for our businesses and one of the top five issues for our residents, which is beautification. And I think Ocean Avenue is outstanding and, and CRA and the city are on the right path. And let's just take it that next step for the next year. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any other hands raised? There are no more hands raised for public comment. So board chair, if you'd like to close public comment, you may. Yeah, let's go ahead and move to um, uh, make a motion to uh, close public comment. You're, you're okay. You don't need a motion, board chair. You can you can do that on your own. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on to item number six, uh, the consent agenda, uh, approval of the CRA advisory board meeting minutes uh, from last time, November 5th, 2020. Um, I read through them, they seem accurate on my end. Are there any changes that can be made? All right, let's go ahead and make a motion then to uh, approve the uh, CRA, CRA advisory board meeting minutes from November 5th, 2020. Allie, you're muted. Mm -hmm. A little to the other side, Tom. Motion to approve. <laughs> Second. You know what? It's just a good idea for everybody. I mean, if everyone I'm unmuted, muted. can we just mute it now? Then we wouldn't have to mute, right? You're right. Chair. Okay, yeah, the panel was all the panel's all muted. Um, so I second. All right. Any opposed? They're all, all right. muted. All right, all in favor? Aye. All right, and none opposed. Aye. That motion carries. All right, moving on to item number seven, the assignments on uh, the review of the commercial properties within Boy Meets Boulevard um, is tabled. Uh, so we won't do that tonight. Um, well, there's reports on pending assignments that I guess is also tabled. So we're going to move over to our new assignment. 7C, number one, discussion and consideration of the responses to the RFP. Uh, or RFQ for the Cottage District Infill Housing De Redevelopment Project Development Proposal. Uh, good evening, Board Chair and Board Members. Uh, Michael Simon, Executive Director of the CRA, uh, for the record. The item before you this evening, the assignment for you this evening, uh, as given to you by the CRA Board, um, is to uh, review and uh, listen to the questions of the uh, respondents from the uh, Cottage District RFP for infill housing, infill affordable housing, that was released on August uh, 11th. And the, the, uh, the date of deadline for responses was August 23rd. And as of the 23rd, the CRA received uh, five proposals from five different development teams. And you'll see that on cover uh, in the middle of the, of the page there and the bullets. The intent of the Cottage District Infill Housing Redevelopment Project RFP was to solicit proposals from qualified, experienced developers that were financially capable of, of purchasing or uh, acquiring the property in some way from the CRA and completing a infill housing uh, project for single family home ownership, either detached or attached. And that could be in the form of a, a single family residence or a townhouse or a garden style of a townhouse single story. Um, all of the information with regard to uh, the categories as they related to the requirements of the RFP are provided to you uh, as part of the RFP uh, analysis as the CRA advisory board. And this evening we have. Uh, in attendance, it appears to be, if not all, four of the five. So the, the recommendation from staff is that 
the uh, CRA advisory board consider allowing each of the respondents a maximum of 15 minutes to do their presentation. And then that would follow by board questions for as long as you have questions. And then once you finished your round of questioning, you would open it to the public. If there are any comments from the public regarding that particular uh, respondent or proposer's uh, presentation, once those public comments are closed, it could go back to the CRA advisory board for follow-up uh, questions. The public is not directing questions to the respondents or the proposers. The public comment is directed to the advisory board, and there is not a need to get into a discussion back and forth. It is a comment of something that they've observed as a public, and you may or may not fall with the question of the proposer. But the intent is not to have the proposer uh, answer questions from the public. Um, and then it would go back to you, and, and you would move on once you close your questioning. That second round, you would just then uh, end the discussion with that proposer, and we would move on to the next proposal. Uh, does that seem uh, acceptable to you as an advisory board? Yes. Okay. So, for purposes of notifying the attendees that are participating development team members, the uh, first RFP proposal that was received, and these are in the order of the, that they were received, the date and the time. There's not a particular order of alphabet, it's just simply the date and time they were submitted in that order. The first Proposal to listen to advisory board members is from Boynton Beach District Development, Cottage District Development, LLC. And if the members of that organization will be ready, uh, we will work with you to bring up your uh, PowerPoint in a moment. You'll see that on your screen. And we have the list of names uh, for this particular organization. We have uh, Nicholas Hine, Chris Hine, Gary Smeagol, Pharrell Tiller, and Kevin Crowder. Uh, they may all speak, or a few of them may speak, but um, that's the team. So I have um, Kevin Crowder. Kevin Crowder. You have been unmuted, and it says you're self-muted. I also saw uh, Gary Smeagol. Bonnie, can we wait one second? Alan's got something up. It may be important. <laughs> it may be, it may be not. Uh, Michael and uh, crew, um, I, I feel like if there's uh, disclosures to make, uh, I need to make them now. Sound right? Very good, yes, sir. I mean, we're not a we're not a voting body necessarily, but um, we do do that ethics training thing. <laughs> Um, so I would like to disclose that um, some of the people on these teams are either clients or fellow consultants of mine, uh, Bradley Miller, WGI, uh, Urban Design, I'm a landscape architect, our firm does uh, development work and so we work with all these people, um, Pulte Homes and that's that's um, those are people that I work with in the profession. So there's my disclosure. Board Member Hendricks, uh, as part of your disclosure, you are not participating as a landscape architect on any of these particular proposals that you're reviewing this evening, correct? That is a correct statement. Thank you. All right, so Gary Spiegel, you have been unmuted. Gary Spiegel, you have been unmuted. I'm sorry. Full, dis right. sorry, full disclosure, um, um, Gary Smeagol is a client of mine as well. Um, banking client of mine as well, so full disclosure there. Okay, and that was Aquanet uh, board member Thomas. We're on mute, right? right? Can you guys see us there and hear us okay? Yes, I have Kevin Crowder unmuted and Gary Smeagol unmuted. Okay, this, we're, we're presenting from Gary's computer here. Just want to make sure you guys can hear us loud and clear. Yeah. Yes, we can. Awesome, awesome. Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for, for having us tonight. Good evening, CRA staff and advisory board. 
Uh, my name is Farrell Tiller with the Boynton Beach Cottage District Development LLC. And uh, we're pleased to present to you guys tonight our proposal for the cottages at Seacrest. So we're, we're really excited about this project. We're really excited about a lot of the redevelopment projects that you all have going on in Boynton Beach right now with CRA. Uh, we've done an extensive review of CRA plans, the heart of Boynton Beach district plans and annual reports. Uh, and we love what's going on in Boynton Beach right now. You'll see as we go through this proposal, we've done a lot of work with CRAs before. Uh, we love CRAs, we love what they stand for, uh, and we love what you guys have, have done in Boynton Beach. So I guess I'll just direct on the slides here when we go to the next one. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, thank you. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Thank you. All right. So, looks like this is our uh, RFP document and not the uh, presentation. I think it looks like the table of contents. Hmm. Yeah, this is our this is the actual RFP document itself and not our uh, our our PowerPoint presentation. Do you Sorry about that. That's okay. We can make that adjustment. <laughs> this won't count against your time. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, can you all see us there, or is it just just audio? It's just audio. Okay, cool. There's just a limited amount of, of screens and the board needs to be visible to the public for purposes of the sunshine. Makes sense. All right, there we go. So before I turn, thank you. Thank you guys for making that adjustment. Uh, before I turn it over to Nicholas here, my colleague, I'll just do a quick intro of our team and our qualifications. Uh, this group's been doing real estate and development work for over 150 years. Um, most of most of the projects taking place right here in Palm Beach County in South Florida. Our core team is made up of three firms, Mecca Farms, NRH Homes, and Chris Allen Realty. So these three firms have been working together in this capacity for over 15 years. Uh, we've done a lot of redevelopment work. And we found in some of the past projects that we've done, this is this kind of st structure of the three companies leads to the most efficiency and certainty. So another thing I'd like to highlight, we're local here in Palm Beach County. Um, most of us here are, are native, born and raised here in Palm Beach County. I know myself, Gary and Chris all went to FAU and Boca. Uh, Nicholas went to Palm Beach State College and uh, has an MBA from Nova Southeastern. So we love Palm Beach County. We care deeply about this community. We want to see it grow. We want to see it succeed. So that's why we get really excited about, about projects like this. Um, some of the other members of our project team, Business Flare, that's the company that I work for. We are a economic development and redevelopment consulting company. And we work on both sides of projects like this, uh, working with uh, the public sector and the private sector. Um, so we understand economic development and redevelopment from a holistic uh, standpoint. Mills Short and Associates is our landscape architect, our architect and engineer. Uh, has been a trusted partner of ours for many years, very well renowned throughout the state of Florida. Some of the strengths of our project team, similar project experience, Nick's gonna get into that on our next slide. Um, local knowledge, again, we're local here to Palm Beach County. This is where we've done majority of our work. Uh, we have a comprehensive marketing and sales program. Chris Haney Jr. is gonna get into that a little bit later on tonight. Uh, and then financial capacity, flexibility, and efficiency. Uh, so briefly, I'll just introduce our, our key team here. Mr. Gary Smeagle of Mecca Farms is one of the most experienced land developers in South Florida. Uh, he's the general counsel for Mecca Farms and uh, director of land development here at Mecca Farms, one of you know 100 year old business that's home is here, right here in Palm Beach County. Uh, we also have Nicholas Haney of NRA Tomes. Nicholas is also a native to Palm Beach County. Uh, he's a third generation builder here, has a lot of experience. He's been working in real estate development almost his entire life. 
And uh, he and I are, are, uh, are millennials. So we understand real estate from a young buyer's perspective. And a lot of times in projects like this, that's the market that we're, we're looking at primarily is young families, you know, people who are going to come to our communities, you know, plant their roots and, and grow with, with the community. Uh, so Nick will serve as our construction manager on this project. We also have Chris Haney Jr. of Chris Allen Realty. He's going to serve as our marketing sales and project manager. He'll get into a little bit more tonight, our, our marketing and sales approach. Um, but Chris Allen Realty employs over 20 local real estate professionals here in Palm Beach County. They're very well renowned. Um, pride themselves on being a local boutique real estate firm and not a you know big box retailer. Uh, we also have Wesley Millish and Short Associates. That's going to be our architect. Engineer. And uh, myself and Kevin Crowder will serve as redevelopment associates, um, project members on this. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nicholas and he'll talk about some of our prior experience. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Can you hear me fine? Sure. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Again, my name is Nicholas Haney. I appreciate the opportunity to bid on this project. Um, you can go ahead and, and go into the next slide. Next slide. Okay, so here on this page, here's here's a list of some, some completed projects in the past that we've done in Palm Beach County and, and surrounding areas. Uh, if you can see Riviera Beach, which is 89 townhouse units, Deray Beach, which is very similar project to this, uh, and that was 11 single family units. And then we've worked with the West Palm Beach CRA to do stuff in historic Northwood um, and Lantana with 141 single family units, Boynton, West Boynton, which we're building some commercial and flex space, uh, Bureau Beach, which is 55 townhouse units, and another project in Bureau, which is 29 single family houses, and Lake Worth, where we built a handful, you know, around 10 single family houses. Uh, next slide. To, to go a little bit more into detail with the projects, uh, Riviera Beach, it was about 12 and a half acres. Uh, we purchased the property with over $2 million in liens and code enforcement violations. You know, we worked closely with the city and the CRA to get those reduced as long as we cleared the property and got some new redevelopment there. And on the left, on the right, there's a before picture and an after picture of the site. And, you know, it's looking great and, and the projects move along fast. Next slide, please. And again, uh, Delray Beach, we built 11 single family homes there. Uh, the reason why I said that this project is very similar to uh, the, the Boynton Beach Cottage District uh, property is that we had to do uh, road, sewer main, and water main, uh, which will be kind of similar to, to what we did there. And, and this neighborhood turned out great. It sold as fast as we could put them up. And, you know, the community really, really embraced them. You, you go to the next slide. And then, of course, the, the West Palm Beach CRA and Historic Northwood, uh, you know, we've built a handful of houses. And if you see on the bottom, we've, you know, done anything from remodel to new construction. And, you know, uh, if you go to the next slide, there's a, a more complete list. Um, you know, again, it includes some remodels, some new uh, construction houses that we built, and then uh, some future construction. Um, and if you notice on the bottom where lilac ports are, um, we worked very closely with the CRA of West Palm and Sarah Mulder and Allison Justice to obtain a couple lots from them to build income restricted homes similar to, to this project. Next slide. Uh, why we chose the, the Boynton Beach Cottage District, uh, it's a great location, it's proximity to 95, it's proximity to the beach, proximity to New City Hall and all the new redevelopment that you guys ha have allowed uh, in the area. Some project goals that we have uh, is to improve home ownership in the area, um, you know, create a pretty good diverse housing mix by doing the townhouses and smaller single families and then some larger single families. Um, and also to in increase property tax and, and TIF generated money for you guys. Um, you know, and, and this project specifically, you know, we're pretty excited that we get to build roadways and do our own utilities because it really adds to the facade and the newness of uh, the proposed homes. You can go to the next slide. So here is a, an option A for a site plan. Uh, if you notice, you know, we incorporated a community garden, we incorporated a tot lot, 
Um, and you could see that the housing mixes are are pretty good mix between the townhouses and the single families to you know kind of add to the synergy and, and not make it look so blocked out. Um, you know, it, it was really fun kind of working on this site plan because typically in, in projects that we build, uh, you know, we don't do community gardens. And I think it's something that's really, really fun and 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 new. Um, and, and it's great to kind of have a sustainable food, you know, right in your neighborhood. And I think it's it's unique too on how we proposed where Mecca and the CRA can kind of create a synergy and you know it might be a good pilot program to kind of copy in other CRAs and other you know cities uh, as far as keeping a, a community garden going because as we all know it's, it's hard to keep those going um, and if you notice on the exterior of the property in the yellow dots um, you know we proposed some solar uh, street lights which you know we believe is is definitely the future and definitely the future in, in this application um, you know, and it really reduces, you know, the carbon footprint in the neighborhood. And, and as builders, we, we have to be very conscious of that. Um, on, to the, on to the next slide. So here's a, a mass rendering. Um, you know, it, it, the houses aren't going to look like this, obviously, but it just kind of shows you from a side view um, of what the density will look like, how the neighborhood will kind of be laid out. And, you know, it has a good flow with the existing houses and the existing neighborhood. Um, so, you know, we're, we're confident that, that this is a very successful project and, and a very successful site plan. Um, you can go to the next slide. Uh, again, here's an option B for a site plan. Um, the road comes in off the east and, you know, it, this site plan kind of allows for, for more future use. You know, if the CRA decided to purchase properties that weren't included in the site plan. Um, and again, you know, this one will have exterior lighting, you know, abundance of, of uh, landscape and it has a community garden to kind of work with the existing property that's not part of this project and also it allows for the playground and tot lot to kind of be closer to the existing roads to allow for more of a community feel with the playground um on to the next slide so here is uh is some elevations of, of some proposed units that we're we're thinking that'll work here um, on the top, we have a Kingfisher, which has a nice covered front porch. Um, and again, that's the biggest model that we have. It's a three bedroom, two bath, and it has a, a one and a half car garage. And then below that is a Schoolmaster, which is just stepped down from the Kingfisher. And it has a nice covered front porch, a nice covered back porch, two car garage. And it's a very, very efficient. We've sold many of these houses and customers love them. They build plenty of equity in the houses and it's just a great product. Uh, below that is the Augustus model. So this is the model that we worked with the West Palm CRA uh, to get approved on, on the lots that we obtained from them to build on. Uh, you know, this this model here, uh, we commem commemorated after Hazel Augustus, which he was the first African-American architect and builder in the Pleasant City area, which, you know, I dug a little bit deeper into that area once I worked with the CRA to obtain the lots. And, you know, I found it really interesting, the history and how that neighborhood was approached. And so that's how that model got its name. And then below is the Yellowtail, which is our townhouse product, um, which is a very, very nice product. Um, you know, and, and again, it kind of adds to that uh, product diversity mix. Uh, on to the next slide. So on this, uh, on this slide, you know, we have a floor plan of a couple of the models that we have. Um, again, on the left is the Augustus model. Uh, that's a very nice three bedroom, two bath, has a, an open concept. Um, again, this is the most affordable model and you know, very user friendly and very affordable and allows the end user to gain a lot of equity and, and simple, simple use of ease, easy use. <laughs> and then uh, next to that is a Schoolmaster, which is a little bit bigger model. Um, again, it's a three bedroom, two bath, has a nice covered back porch, nice covered front porch, two car garage and a couple closets in the master, which is nice. Um, and then again, the Yellowtail model and the Kingfisher model. Um, on to the next slide. Uh, at this time, I'll turn it over to Chris Haney Jr. and he'll talk a little bit about the sales. Hello everyone, can you hear me good? Yes, sir. Okay, so as uh, Nick was saying, my cousin, so we work very closely together. Uh, I'm also a builder as well and doing single family products and some multifamily with Nick. So we get to work together and be 
uh, collaborate on the sales side as well as the design side. And looking at these floor plans, you can see each one of them has a double sink in the master, interior walk-in closet in the master, interior laundry rooms, which are all key features that you're going to see buyers wanting to uh, to have. And um, so kind of uh, what we were looking at is some articles that just recently were published of who the buyers are in this area in this price point. And what we're seeing is 70% of the buyers are actually coming out of rentals. Local people that are becoming out of rentals and they're going to be buyers instead of renters. And that's really what we got attracted to in these type of projects and the local real estate economy right now. Um, about 25% of that uh, ratio and those ratings are coming from other counties. But the main focus and the bulk of the people are going to be coming from within the county, within the city, and coming out of a rental, and now they can buy. So as well as being in the real estate and marketing side, um, we do uh, also I'm a loan officer. So I get to see the lending side and ability of repayment, which is a new thing um, that we're actually looking at, which we weren't looking at in 05 and 06 in this industry. But um, so marketing-wise, we do a lot of the local uh events we do mailers we do local targeted marketing on your social media platforms as nick and farrell said they're millennials i think i'm still considered a millennial i don't know i think i'm pushing the limit there but um we, so we really try to drive the traffic to, to those buyers as well as using the paperback magazines and local um chamber of commerce magazines as well so we integrate both sides of the marketing aspect uh, radio advertisements um, that's kind of our key key factor for getting the buyer, as well as the workforce. Um, we're interested in doing some job fairs, um, to find some interns. Uh, you know, getting these trades is going to be harder and harder. I don't know how we're going to be doing it in the next five, ten years, but um, we we really want to drive home that we're here. We're local. As Farrell said, I was born and raised in Palm Beach County. About 95% of my subcontractors are based in Palm Beach County, and we want to maintain that, and as, but more specifically, Boynton Beach. So um, we would like to see um, Boynton Beach job fairs uh, provide some of our labor force project. Um, and the affordability aspect. So the reason I touched on the loan, um, because when Nick brought this to me and was talking about the models he wanted to propose and price points, I started running the numbers. And for the most expensive proposed price on this project, doing a conventional loan, your barrier to entry is very low. I mean, somebody could save it up in a few months and your payment's gonna be just at $2,000 a month for a single family home, 1,600 square feet with a one and a half car garage. That's almost unheard of in this market. So um, that, and that is the most expensive. Your, your lowest price, you're going down to well below uh, $1,800 for a total payment. Um, so we're really driving home who our buyers can be and who we think they are going to be. And we, we think it's opened up to a large pool of people that can get out of those rental situations. And um, there's room for equity growth. 100% uh, of the people that I've sold a house to have equity in their home at this point, And we want to maintain that record. And um, as Nick said, we've worked with the Northwood Historic District. We won the 2017 award for infill, infill construction in Northwood. Um, we want to continue that in the point. And uh, we're excited about this project. We appreciate the opportunity to present. And uh, thank you guys for hearing us. And I'll give it back to Nick. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, I guess if you could go back one slide for me. Board, board Chair, if I may, if I may interrupt the presentation for just one moment. Uh, yep. We hit the 15 minute mark of Sarah advisor. Okay. So it's up to you, if, if you may, if I may, it's up to you board, whether to decide that now that we're doing the first one, that if 15 minutes aren't enough, then you can give them, you know, an additional five minutes or and say 20 minutes, but whatever happens with this one, all the others will get equal time. I just want to let you know that what you've seen now is the 15 minute mark. And uh, I don't think they're finished. So if you, decide to give them an extra five minutes uh then the next group would obviously we get 20 as well so that's up on to our you. last slide here Hold okay. uh, so that's up. Last slide. Want to is that what you'd like to do yeah let me just let me poll everyone i'm just a quick it's a it's a yes or no unmute yourselves uh I, colleen i can't see you but i know you're here so it'd definitely be a yes or no uh, mine is a yes for the extra five minutes because i want to hear the end of the presentation Yes. 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 Yes.
Go ahead and finish up, man. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate it. So I guess, could you go back one slide for me, please? Yeah, so again, you know, I just want to touch on, on the financial capability of this team. You know, we, we've done many projects in Palm Beach County and basically all over Florida. Um, you know, this, we continue to do projects and, you know, we, we remain to do a lot. Um, um, you know, and to the right, you know, we, we anticipate that the project will take about a couple of years, but, you know, with the way that sales are going, I'm confident that, you know, we could wrap that up faster. Um, on, on to the next. Oh, I'll, I'll pass it to Farrell for one minute to talk about the economic impact. So just real quickly, and we don't have a slide for this, but I'll just mention it to you guys. But here at Business Flare, we have an economic uh, modeling program that we use called Implan that basically estimates economic output of projects like this based on certain inputs. So based on the $11.5 million investment in this project that we have here, we expect a couple of different outcomes to, to occur. So we're expecting just under $1.4 million of TIF funding to be generated to the BBCRA within the first 10 years of the project and a total of 4.1 million over the life of the CRA uh, until your sunset in 2044. Uh, we expect the creation of approximately 127 construction jobs for this project, uh, total economic impact of just under $20 million uh, and more than $1 million in net new annual spending retail spending my new residents. So that's increased purchasing power of residents in the CRA. So we think this is a financially sound project for, for everybody. And again, we're, we're super excited. Nick's going to finish this up here on the last slide. Okay. Yeah. So as far as local hiring, you know, we're local builders, local developers, uh, you know, Chris talked about it. We only hire 95% local, local subcontractors. Um, you know, it only makes financial sense to hire local people. And, you know, we're excited to work with the CRA any way that we can. And, uh, you know, I, we appreciate the, the opportunity to bid and, and thank you. Thank you everyone for your time. Thank you. For, thank you for presenting. Um, or, or chair, you're self-muted. Um, Can we go back to the presentation? Um, it was once like went away real quick, and I didn't want to interrupt him because I know he was running late on time. Because we go, we do questions after each uh, presentation. Right. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's. Uh, can we get the presentation back up, and I'll tell you where it was. It was something in there that it. That, just keep on rolling up. Wait, uh, keep going and stop. Here's a question that I had, and I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm in the right place with this. Um, fourth and fifth is the area. So at the bottom left of this of, of this uh, proposal here, the bottom left part of the site plan, more or less, and I think I'm looking at it the right way. Did I miss something? Like I was, just, uh, I might have missed it where the CRA purchased the properties that were in this space, or are we talking about a whole different site? Because I, I must be missing something. The CRA owns that those three those, in that left corner. The CRA owns those that property. Okay, give me one. Okay, all right. It and uh, that was my only question for them because some I, I must be thinking about a different property that CRA has, but I'm ninety nine percent sure I'm not confused. Corner of Fourth and Seacrest Boulevard. Yeah. If that's if that's what you're asking, board chair. It was one of the first purchases that I made as a as an employee of the CRA. But Mike, is it is are, are there properties at the bottom of this that refuse to sell? Yes. There's one property there that's blank, which the presenter is. Oh, it says not. 
You know, it's really small on my screen. I'm sorry. Yep, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Just... There's that that one and the there's one at the corner of the street there. Next one over a little bit with your arrows there to the left. Oh, this one. Yeah. There you go. Those are the only two. Those are the only two that the CRA does not currently own. Okay, because those are the ones that wouldn't sell. And then this piece up here, I believe, belongs to the Oilers, right? Correct. It's not part of the project. The parking lot in the very northwest uh, corner there. That belongs to the daycare center. Correct. Mm -hmm. I got. I I do. I would. I, I couldn't. You can't really from from my side. You cannot see the not included very well. It just it's like more small text. Okay. okay. Go on. Anyone else have another any questions for the builders? I got questions or comments or something. Um, gentlemen and ladies, thank you for presenting. First off, thank uh, you. Happy to happy to have you in the conversation. A um, couple observations or or comments. Um, I'm 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 not sure that I'm I'm not sure that I'm thrilled with a, a house that doesn't have a garage and the reason is this. Um we want to try and keep this um area tidy as tidy as we can. We want to make sure that people have the opportunities to put their junk behind fences. <laughs> and um that's that's was one of the first kind of impressions. Um I think I think uh, everything else looks good to me. Um, if there's, I, I'm I'm curious how the the fire department's gonna uh, uh, respond to a, a T road, but that may or may not be an issue. Um, I don't know, Mike, and this is for all of our our projects that we're gonna see tonight about um, maintenance agreements. Uh, how, how do we keep these this new development clean and tidy and well kept uh, and and not sliding sliding towards uh, being an unkempt area? Um, I think the community garden's a great idea. I think maybe we just want to make it green space and then if the residents want to do some community gardening there, but that's kind of on the management end of it. Um, Mike, can you speak to that? Are we are we requiring some kind of um, uh, management for the, the you know years to come, or is it just uh, single townhouse, whatever? Uh, yes, sir. I, I believe the question could be asked of the proposer as to whether or not they're forming an HOA, um, right. and, or uh, just like with the site plan, uh, it was a good comment about a garage. Is the developer willing to look at only garage tile houses? Is really more of here on the track there. With regard to maintenance, I believe the answer or the question would be for a homeowner association. Um, and again, that you, you made a point about the, the T road and, and you didn't dwell on that. I think it's important that the advisory board doesn't get too nailed down into the nitty gritty of the site plan. This is a conceptual for purposes of, of getting into a discussion. So you're noting things that you might not like about it, or the, the elevations that you pointed out with the garage. But I think the question for the proposer is, is there an HOA? Uh, yeah, so so we proposed it as being an unincorporated neighborhood. Um, you know, with past experience, we, we just felt that, you know, the, the point of code enforcement, you know, they keep a tight leash on, on how people keep their yards, um, you know, and people are more receptive to an unincorporated neighborhood um, just because they, they feel that there's there's more freedom. But again, you know, we are flexible with everything, you know, here and even the houses without the garages. Um, we're very flexible, you know, with and and you know, we we want to make the project work. However, you guys think uh, that does, you know, we're we're open to that. Um, one quick question, Mike. The other presenters are they listening to these particular questions that we're asking right now? Correct. Okay, cool. Uh, for the Boynton Beach uh, Cottage District um, Builders Company. What efforts or what types of efforts are, are you going to uh, try to employ to make sure that we're using local um, tradesmen on these projects? How will you how do you plan to uh, reach those people? 
yeah again you know we're, we're open to working with you guys to to, to find some more high, local uh, subcontractors and, and labor um you know currently we already majority use local guys um maybe one person isn't local but everybody else is local and you know it just makes financial sense to use local people can you for me and my, and my uh, ocd speak to the nature of what local means to you so that i can understand it? Yeah, i was just gonna thing is local palm beach there's local close to boynton beach we called that tom Livingston, hi, this is Kevin Kraft, and, and I'm, I'm remote from the other folks. And for example, we're working on a project in South Dade County, and what we can do with, with your CRA as well is we've worked with this, are going to work with the CRA down there on a CRA specific. The first job fair we hold for that project is going to be a job fair we work hold in conjunction with the CRA, both looking at job opportunities for CRA residents as well as the opportunity to identify if there are any potential subcontracting firms located with CRA as sort of the first opportunities. So in the, in the date, how many local applications did you get and how many did you accept? That project is not at the job fair stage yet. It's one of the commitments that we've made to the CRA at the time that we have uh, building permit in hand. Okay. Would you be willing to, as a condition of receiving um, the go ahead with this project, would you would you be willing to, as a condition, be willing to do uh, mail or um, to the zip code, let's say three three four five and whatever surrounding, maybe out to Military Trail. That's, that might be a little too far wide, but the, the point is, would you be willing to do something like that as opposed to a job fair, so that way we know for a fact that those that live in the area um receive some notice for sure that way that um as a advisory board we feel like you know we've done our part to make sure that those local tradesmen and skilled workers have been given sufficient notification would you be willing to look into doing something like that if asked of course yeah, we, we, we would definitely be willing to work with you guys to identify the necessary zip codes for that, but we think that's an awesome idea. Um, okay. Okay, Mike, we can go ahead unless there are other questions from the board. Um, if we're moving then into if there's no other comments at this moment from the board, there is a, a question from the public. Um, Ms. Sawyer, uh, you're unmuted. Thank you, Mike. Susan Oyer, 140 Southeast 27th Way. As board chair Barbara has noted, um, my family owns the big parcel there on the west side of the block. Um, I, I'm not sure if anyone's bothered to reach out to anyone in my family. Sadly, our cottage, which is the north building you're seeing there, will be 95 next year. And it has um, gotten, I think, to the end of its lifespan, sadly, because it's made out of you know, reclaimed wood and hurricane shipwreck wood and, and my grandfather built it. And I think we are going to be forced to knock it down um, at some point in the spring. So um, the developers really should approach me or my brother Harvey to see about doing a ground lease because while we don't want to sell the land, um, we, we would like to have some income producing off of that. And it looks like it's approximately enough to add another four buildings to. So I will just throw that out there. And um, whoever it is that's the head of all this, um, Mike has my, my address and email and everything. So feel free to reach out to me if you want to, or my brother. Either one works. Um, I will say in looking at this, since we are the major landholder on, on this block next to the CRA, 
Um, hopefully you guys will take into consideration how we feel because we've owned this property for 95 years. This next early spring, about January, February, will be about 95 years that we've owned this. Um, so I would like to say I really like option A a lot. I think it's very beautiful. If I have to look at both of them, that's definitely the one. Um, things I, I think the developer needs to stop and think about, though, and I, and I do truly like option A. Um, there needs to be walls or something at the end of that interior street to keep people from driving onto our property, through our fence, whatever. And I see two trees, but that is certainly not going to be enough. So I hope there is something else put up in addition. Um, I'm wondering what the mitigation is going to be because I know they're going to be elevating these up, which will, of course, create a flooding problem on our property. And while our houses are elevated, they certainly are elevated at the point that, um, you know, I think the new housing will be built. And these buildings survived the 1950 hurricane. <laughs> that flooded out Boynton Beach and people went around in canoes for weeks with dead fish and bodies all over. And I, and I certainly don't want to see that and I don't want that impacting our land. So I hope there's proper berms as well as mitigation to keep the flood water on their property and not on ours. Um, I worry about the foundation pounding. While there's less foundation pounding for a home than there is, say, for an eight-story building, um, we need cognizant of the fact this is one of the oldest houses in the city and I hope that they will reach out and find a way to mitigate that. About and three I, minutes for chair. I'm sorry so I'm done thank you. Thank you. All right um, Mike we can go on to the next presenter. Else from the public, Connie? Do you see? No one else. Okay. No one else from the public. Bear with is, us a minute. Does the board have any other comments now that the public is is finished before we go to the next one? Uh, I'm ready to go to the next one, but I just need a little clarification here. I know these are conceptual in nature, um, but if the fire department makes them put in a road that takes out a unit, right? And the terror, you know, if the, 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 that's so we we could so. Right, you're you're the rest, be getting... the rest of my board members. The you know these these will can change. We could lose a unit here and lose a unit there. Right. That was yeah. right. The quality. Yeah. The, I think the, the the you can see from your backup the the key elements that are uh, a part of the review and part of the RFP. Those elements. The the submission criteria. Um, the, the things that they were supposed to include in the RFP response, elements that the board and the CRA advisory board wanted them to provide, those are really the, I think, the very important items. The site plan, can it change slightly here and there? Yes, that's much farther down the road after someone is selected, if, if anyone is selected. So I think that's, that's where I didn't want you to get too caught into uh, you're doing a great job not getting too far down into the street level stuff, but um, you're absolutely right. These these can sl change slightly. Most of these uh, individuals are experienced enough to know approximate widths of roads, you know, the roads, the sidewalks, how it's all going to fit together within, uh, you know, a few units if, if that. So I think I think that uh, that was a good comment to make, uh, Vice Chair. And if we're ready, if Fox. Bridge is ready, and there's no other comments from the board. Tom, um, are you self-muted, Tom? Shows them as self-muted. Yes, you're just you're self-muted. Oh, there. We there you go. Um, believe that uh, the other presenters are are listening and um, hopefully they took note of Susan's previous comments uh, so that uh, they wouldn't need to be repeated after each presentation. That's, that's certainly up to the board. The board can manage that if, if you'd like to, if that, if that becomes an issue. 
Yeah, no, I would just hope that um, you know, yes, sir. I took note of it. Okay. For the uh, for the board's information, um, at the city level, when we develop this, when it gets developed, they'll have to retain water on their own site. That's kind of the rule. Um, some of those other issues they'll have to deal with, but um, that's 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 going to be a requirement for any site plan approval is that they keep water on their space. Thank you. Yes, sir. You can't drain onto your neighbor's lots. I have unmuted Grant Horowitz. Okay, Mr. Horowitz, if you're ready to start, you are unmuted. Great. Uh, thank you very much, uh, CRA staff and advisory board. We appreciate the opportunity to present. Um, as uh, just a matter of background, uh, my name is Grant Horowitz. Uh, I'm going to present on behalf of Fox Ridge Capital. Um, to give some background on Fox Ridge Capital and the experience in the Boynton Beach area, as well as with uh, the local or various CRAs throughout the state, um, currently uh, Fox Ridge Capital is the owner of an office building that is sits in the heart of Boynton Beach right now, right off of Quantum Boulevard and Gateway Boulevard. Um, that opportunity, uh, we just partnered with the city of Boynton Beach um, to expand and build a parking lot for uh, the Eco Park, which has been under, I guess, uh, construction or, or design for about 20 years now. So we were successfully able to do that. And that parking lot is open and available uh, to all Boynton Beach residents at this point. Uh, in conjunction with that parking lot, the building that we own there, uh, we've retro, we basically rebuilt um, and have now added about 900 jobs or will be adding about 900 jobs uh, to the city of Boynton Beach. Um, so that's one of those uh, true feel good stories of what's gone on uh, within the city of Boynton Beach and, and why it's so desirous of, of us and others to uh, to develop within the county, within the city. Uh, in addition, we've got a project that is very similar to what we're presenting uh, going on in Miami, which is a 50 unit project that we're working with the CRA in, in uh, Coconut Grove on right now. And uh, you know, it all kind of stems back into what we're proposing this evening. So we look at this as, as basically a, a true partnership between Foxridge Capital and the CRA. Um, we believe home ownership is the key to creating wealth and more importantly, creating pride within the city of Boynton Beach and whatever the local communities are. Uh, with that, we're trying to keep pricing as, as affordable as possible. And as we talk about in, in the presentation, you'll see the design um, is going to be largely fungible. And that's going to be based on conversations with the CRA and making sure that we meet the needs and the desires of the city. So if you can please go to the next slide. Thank you. So what we're looking to develop are really uh, homesteads, which are either townhouses or single family homes um, that will meet the, the low to moderate income household levels uh, as determined by uh, workforce housing. Uh, right now, our, our schematic plans, which are conceptual in, in nature only, show 45 homes, but with, uh, with the ability to develop more into the maximum of 65 single family or townhouses on the, on the site. Um, all the townhouses are three bedrooms, two and a half baths, and consist of 1,354 square feet. And the single family homes will be three bedrooms and two full bathrooms, uh, consisting of just under 1,500. Again, the desire is to keep the home prices as affordable as possible. And starting with the home prices ranging from about 250,000 and raising up initially to about 280,000. And then there'll be options uh, that homeowners can select it to increase it. One of the more important things that we were doing when we were, de when we were devising and, and coming up with the site plan was we wanted to create a community feel and really provide and leave as much ample green space as possible uh, for city parks and pocket parks for the community to um, partake in. Not just the community that we're developing the, the 45 plus homes for, but Boynton Beach as a whole. So as you sit, thank you, um, as you sit and look at the design, uh, we've left ample green space on the southwest corner uh, as well as several areas within the within the parcel to have other parks that can be park, pocket parks for dog parks and for other places for for kids and, and the community to congregate. So this is a conceptual, not final site plan, but we want to make sure that we partner with the city to maximize uh, the visibility and the uses of the land. 
The site plan is fungible and will allow maximum density with multiple green spaces as well as ample parking. So we've, we've provided parking um, in each unit as well as having additional uh, freestanding parking. As we know, uh, visitors and guests often aren't allocated when, de when developing a, a site plan. So we tried to take that into account. Um, to answer one of the questions, all the site plans um, have the availability to have garages as shown in the conceptual drawings and then in the future slides, uh, we have not shown with garages, but as you can see laid out uh, next to all the homes or below all the homes, we can, we can easily add uh, parking spaces to this. Um, we've created this also as an internal feel. So we wanted all the roads to lead inwards and wanted to create more of a community uh, atmosphere. So there will be an HOA that will be a portion of that. The HOA will make sure that there's continuity and, and, and rules and regulations are maintained and the homes are kept up to the standards that we expect them to be in the way that we that we will deliver these to. So uh, if you go to the next slide, please. So this is a picture of the, the the conceptual picture is actually an actual rendering of the uh, townhouse units. There are two side-by-side -side units um, with uh, half baths on the first floor and two full baths on the second floor. Um, we've designed these in uh, largely to to keep with the cottage district theme and the heart of the Boyton heart of the Boyton uh, master plan communities, which was uh, developed several years ago, and what we've uh, designed our buildings to look look outward facing. The outward space is also set up to have uh, balconies and porches uh, to create a more family-like atmosphere and, and encourage families and, and members of the community to congregate outside and, and be part of the physical community as a whole. Uh, if you go to the next slide, please. This is a picture of the single family home. It is a three bedroom, two bath home. Uh, the garage would sit on this particular rendering on the left side of the picture. Um, that would be adjacent to the to the bedroom and bathroom. Uh, this is a uh, also designed to meet to meet with the cottage district design and feel, as well as with the heart of Boyden master community. It's also with a porch and and again uh, the common theme is we want everybody to congregate. We want this to be a community feel. Um, and with that, we've designed porches out here so that again, uh, as kids are playing in the neighborhood, parents and friends can gather on the porch and, and enjoy time together. Uh, next slide, please. This is pictures of these these exact uh, homes have already been built in other locations. Um, with that, these are the interior finishes and designs. Uh, the finishes will all be stainless steel, full size kitchen equipment, um, stone countertops, which will either be granite or quartz and will be determined uh, individually by the homeowner, full washer and dryers. Um, there'll be basically workforce housing pricing, but with custom home finishes. So we're trying to make it uh, feel and look as though it's not workforce housing, but truly uh, market rate housing that people can come and enjoy and uh, really kind of reap the benefits of. So next slide, please. So with this, it's an, we're, we're really looking to, from a sales and marketing plan, to really target uh, an opportunity for people to work, live, and play in the Boynton Beach area. So um, our initial target market in conjunction with uh, local realtors that we've already engaged to, to perform market studies and to assist us with putting a plan together. Uh, the initial target markets will really be city of Boynton Beach employees, police officers, firefighters, teachers, uh, and nurses and medical practitioners. Um, we found that two workforce housing, uh, two members of the family working uh, fall right into the target market of exactly what we're looking to create. Uh, Pre-sales for, for our units will begin as soon as uh, the earlier of commencement or as soon as we are able to come to a contractual agreement with the Boynton Beach CRA. Um, again, the, the HOA will be created and maintain, to maintain the community and, and keep standards high. Um, from an from a investment perspective, uh, we've already worked with some lending professionals to put together a plan of mortgages and debt in order to maximize the amount of loan to value that the, the buyers can, can utilize. We expect sell and delivery of the homes to be completed within 24 months from the start of infrastructure. So uh, as we'll see on the next slide, uh, we work for, we build these houses on a modular basis, which means that they are constructed largely off-site and brought onto site, um, largely completed. They're delivered with substantially complete. Um, all of the homes will be built meeting uh, Miami-Dade hurricane, hurricane standards. Uh, that includes for roof and structure as well as all, the, 
all windows will be impact windows. Um, it's a very efficient way of constructing houses in today's market at a very cost-effective way of doing so. Um, these homes have been used in throughout South Florida and uh, have been highly successful uh, all throughout the state at, as far as uh, meeting all building code expectations. They're fully customizable by the end users, so all finishes, colors, stones, uh, and anything else that will go into the to the community is totally and it will be totally up to the buyer. So we won't dictate terms. They will they will decide what they want and how they want their 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 home to feel and look. Um, lastly, from an apprenticeship perspective, um, we've already the same general contractor and construction manager that we are working on uh, the building in Boynton Beach, the office building on. It will be working with us on this particular project. Uh, at the office building, we've already put an apprenticeship program in place where as we start the next phase of construction for a build out, um, we will be utilizing local talent to uh, get an education. So the general contractor has already been in touch with Palm Beach State Community College or Palm Beach State College and working through uh, some of the some of the technical aspects of putting the apprenticeship in program. And we expect that to continue uh, in this program as well. So um, next slide, please. From a partnership with the CRA, this is going to be a hand-in-hand -hand partnership and we expect it to continue to be so. Um, so we expect to reinvest back into the community with, with this will be a workforce housing project with affordable pricing. Parks and green spaces, tax bases will increase, the vitality of the neighborhood will continue to, to increase. And we're gonna really try to complete the vision of the Heart of Boynton project that has been on the books for Boynton Beach for many, many years at this point. Um, it's a Really what we're trying to create is a fungible platform where we can have a unique partnership with uh, the CRA um, and we can work hand in hand to create the unit mix, the pricing, uh, subsidies, if anything. And likewise, once we meet a, uh, a revenue projection that we, exceed, we expect to exceed, uh, we would partner with the city in the profits of the community as well. So um, we'd want to give back to the community uh, as well as, uh, you know, as well as partner with the CRA uh, from a financial perspective. So last slide, please. So from a, from a financial commitment, uh, the three partners who are the principals of this, which will be uh, myself, Alex, and Jeff, all of which are on the call this evening, um, will fund all equity needs that are out there. We also have a, commit, a current commitment from Apollo Bank to fund all construction costs. Um, we've partnered with Apollo Bank in on several different ventures, and it's a good partnership that's out there. Whatever shortfalls that there may be from the from Apollo Bank, we will be able to cover from a financial perspective, um, and we expect this process to be 24 months or less. And with that, I will turn it back over to you, and I thank you for uh, allowing us to uh, to present this evening. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Nope, no questions. On the on the first slide showing the two stories. Um, yeah. it, the question like um, Alan had, uh, where's where would parking be there? So it, the picture doesn't show the parking. In front of every unit, there will be available space for parking. Additionally, we are able to add a garage on the first floor of these units if if the option is selected by the buyer. Um, it's There's also going to be space, if you look at the site plan, on either side of the unit, there will also be additional space for parking. Um, I think you said that uh, these buildings exist somewhere else in Florida. They do. There are several uh, different areas where these projects have been built. Uh, I know that we are working on similar type projects in Coconut Grove right now. Uh, there are also several projects that have been built in the Keys that utilize this exact same, uh, maybe not this exact design, but but similar. There are houses in Marathon. If you, uh, we can gladly send you. Uh, some photos of, of pictures of from from that development. Um, I'd be just a little bit more interested in how well they did during um, <clears throat> uh, any storms the last few years. So the last few years, they they the rental the the marathon one 
had, there are a couple different communities. There is a rental community that suffered no damage whatsoever during the last storm. Um, so that one fared very well. Uh, I also believe there's another, there's a completed project in Hallandale as well that may be, uh, may be available if you want to see uh, current pictures of it. Um, you know, I think candidly, these designs probably withstood storms better than some of their concrete, uh, I guess, counterparts. Uh, strictly because they're they're designed to withstand 100 hour 180 mile per hour winds um, from both the structure and the roof perspective, and they'll be all and they're all impact glass as well. Okay, thank you. Oh, I also noticed on the like the master plan, there really wasn't a lot of green space. Uh, you might back to, to, so on the on the master plan, if you look in the southwest corner, the entire southwest corner is an open green space, which, and then there are two other pocket parks that will be developed uh, in here. One of which is just to the north of the the existing uh, home that will not be part of it, right in the middle. And then on the northeast corner, there will be a pocket park as well that'll be used, uh, I believe, for. I guess the intent is that we'll have a bus stop there potentially for for school for kids. Um, as well as some green space for kids to congregate as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, congratulations. The architecture looks great, and um, it's a it's a really cool vibe. Uh, and the modular the modular homes are really they're they're tough. You know, it depends on the builder. It depends on who puts them together. Uh, but they can withstand uh, anything that a CBS house can can withstand when it comes to like hurricanes and such. Um, but I'm I'm loving the architecture. Yeah, so I really we, do. we have these like designs specifically for the cottage district. Yeah, I do like the well, building. Yeah, the the front porches provide uh, informal surveillance. You know, for so that's a safety plus for the neighborhood that we're developing people are sitting on their porch and watching what's going on um, which will be beneficial to this neighborhood <clears throat> be beneficial to any neighborhood. i wish i had a porch <laughs> you can build one <laughs> out there wave your goodbye Um, I guess I have just um, one quick question. Do we know the cost of, of what potentially the HOA would cost in these homes? Just to compare. Sure. <laughs> sure. So for background purposes, I was the chief operating officer of a relatively large, probably the second largest property management company in the state of Florida. Um, so I'm always geared towards reducing uh, any extraneous costs. We expect uh, it's going to depend on a number of factors, but we expect that landscaping will probably be a part of the HOA, given that the parks are going to be inclusive in that. So we're going to try to keep it well under $100, but uh, we haven't finalized our budget for an HOA expense yet. So would you say $100 is the maximum? We're going to try to keep it as economical as possible. Um, so I don't want to give a maximum number, although I will tell you that uh, it will largely fall on the homeowners once the association turns over to the homeowners and they will be able to the, they will be able to self-regulate but the goal is to keep it uh, as minimal as possible and some of this will also depend ultimately on the number of homes that end up be being developed so there'll be there'll be a range but uh, we will keep it as economic as possible thank you I have another question um, our green space, our park space, if you will, on the southwest corner, are you thinking to give that to Parks and Recreation in Boynton Beach uh, to develop as they? Yeah, so I think the, the idea of this community as a whole is to partner with uh, the CRA and the city in some regard. So I think the, the intent would be to convey the land to the city of Boynton Beach for liability purposes because it's not going to be a closed off park and locked off. It's going to be open to the neighborhood. Um, with that, the 
landscaping work just makes sense for the HOA to continue to maintain um, from, a, from an aesthetic perspective is going to tie into the community as a whole. So that was a no. <laughs> well, it, it's it's going to be under the control of the HOA. Well, you... the park itself will be a city park. We will convey the land in partnership to the city. So that will be functioning a public-private partnership where the city will develop, if you want to call it the park, and the HOA will maintain the grounds of the park. All right. Thank you. I have a question. I need to raise my hand. Go. Uh, are these slab or crawl space? So they, there is a, in any modular housing, there will be a crawl space um, uh, uh, beneath it, but it is set on a stem wall that will allow it to be constructed and, and maintained. All right, so I guess we uh, thank you so much for the presentation. And Mike, we can go ahead and call the next presenter. Is there any, are there any comments from the public on this particular response? I don't see any. Okay. All right. Um, before, uh, it's, oh, is that your, one second, we'll pull up uh, the next. Well, McRoot? I have Frank is unmuted. Frank uh, Gotsman is unmuted. And this is uh, Azure Equities LLC and uh, Canary Village. Uh, Frank, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for your time. Thank you for oh. giving us a few minutes to uh, to present a project here. Going to try to be brief. I know you have a lot to hear, a lot of things coming through your way. So uh, we're going we're gonna to try to keep you uh, with just the, the information that you actually need. Um, We've provided a lot of information in the RFP. This is not supposed to be a, a resume uh, of the RFP. It's just a, a quick presentation. Uh, so I hope that you were able to, to review the RFP and, and to read all the, uh, all the information in there. Um, for us, Canary Village was the idea that came from our discussion with the local community and the local people. Originally, we had submitted an unsolicited proposal to work with the community uh, to the CRA. Uh, it seems that there were some likeness, but they wanted to see who else could, could propose some different things. Uh, we're happy to see that some of our original idea came into the, uh, into the actual RFP. Uh, so it seems that we did have some of it here from the community and from the different people that were working there. Uh, if we could go to the next slide. I'm not going uh, to bother you with the, with the history of, of what we're doing, uh, but Azure Equity and, and Immigrant Capital are. Uh, our partner firm. We're currently developing a lot of different uh, P3 partnership. Uh, we're developing 120 townhomes in uh, Pompano Beach. Uh, we're red redeveloping the town center in Devi, Davy, and uh, Miami Gardens. And uh, we won the RFP uh, last year for the anchor site in uh, West Palm Beach, which is 350 units uh, development and over 60,000 square of retail in the Northwood area of West Palm. It's a little over five acres development uh so we're a little bit eclectic we do large project we do smaller project uh in this particular project we wanted to really emphasize uh the local uh lo local local ownership local construction local workforce uh and that's the reason that we team up with the different partners that we already have on whether it's the boyton cdc which we uh couture i believe is, is online uh which we work extensively to find a product that would work for this actual community, whether in price, where our price range is around $205,000 uh, for the single family and, and townhomes, uh, or for the quality or for the different things that we need. Uh, we have uh, Dwayne Randolph also here, who's currently uh, building in Boynton Beach different, different houses, who already has the experience with the training, already has the local workforce, already is doing apprenticeship, uh that's already on board so our team is not 
looking to see how we're going to involve locally. We're already in, uh, locally. If I can get to the next slide, please. Uh, this is the side plan that we've been working, uh, working with. Uh, the general idea was to leave a large park that would donate to the city in the northeast corner because of the bus stop. Uh, there's some kids hanging out there that currently don't really have a place. Uh, that was the original submission. I know the city liked it because they, they kind of required park later on in the RFP when they submitted it. Uh, we have one row which is easy access for fire departments or so on and so forth. On the inside, we have single family homes. We're going to be around 1,500 square feet. Uh, on the outside, we have two story townhomes. We also around the same size. Uh, the idea is not to try to maximize necessarily uh, the amount of units that we could put, but to make it livable and breathable. Uh, everybody has a little garden, so we're going to have room to maybe build a little, a little pool, uh, which is not included right now. Uh, but but this is where we uh, this where we've been going. Uh, the direction was to stay within uh, a cottage feel uh, or, or a key west feel. That's the sense that we have received. And if we go to the different next slides, uh, we're going to see how architects incorporated that feel uh, into that design. A lot of green, a lot of trees, um, and again spaces, space for each car, each. Um, each house or each single family home has their separate uh, driveway with, with some awnings. There's not necessarily parking garage involved right now because we wanted to keep the cost as low as possible to be able to have the people, the local people, afford it as much as possible. And, and, and that's going to be a question of working with the, again, with the CDC. And I think uh, Couture can, in terms of the reason why we're working on providing quality homes uh, for a lower, I would say, or attainable price. Uh, we could go to the next slide uh, where we have a rendering of uh, the model. This is from the northeast corner. As you can see, this is the park where the bus station is going to be. Uh, avoid the kids waiting for the bus to be running around. We could put a little, uh, a little slides and things like this that we will build. We'll donate it to the city. Um, and in the background, you see the townhomes uh, with a little porch and a little uh, on the second floor and a little awning for the uh, for the car. On the next slide, I believe we have the um, we have the single family homes, which is always uh, also in the same style. And you can see the, the car and the driveway and this neighborhood feel that we wanted to give. Um, we wanted to keep it lively also. I mean, this Key West style is something that came back a lot when we discussed with people and designed this project. Uh, that's the reason that we have the house designed the way they are, with, with the porches, with the awning, uh, with the different colors. And that's also where the name Canary came from, because uh, they're very lively and, and very colorful. Um, the next slide, I believe we have... Uh, we have a floor plan, which is a sample floor plan, which is units that we're building currently. The exterior is going to look different, but in this is currently what we're building in uh, Pompano Beach, uh, the about 1,415, 1,500 square feet. Uh, we have three bedroom, we have a living room, and, and so on and so forth. It's a nice two story. Uh, there's a possibility to put larger models that we already have available uh, should the people who buy them, but we wanted to. Uh, make sure that we have as many affordable as possible we'll spend a little more we have the the opportunity to provide them with different models um, that we already have and we have already built um, next we have um, we have again a presentation of a developer has been local when in Broward County developer the year last year uh, a lot of work in South Florida whether again large project or smaller projects uh, a track record of involvement with the community. Uh, we're not just talking about it. It's something that can be uh, can be checked and can be referenced, uh, and the proven use of local contractors. Um, again, our subcontractor is already on. Uh, Dwayne, I don't know if you're on the call currently, but I'd like to give you a couple minutes uh, to discuss that and, and to show the, uh, the the way we work with with the local. Um, Local subcontractor supplier information apprenticeship. Is Dwayne on? Yes, yes, I'm on. Can you hear me? 
Yes, Dwayne, you yes. if you want to take a minute or two, please. This is Dwayne. Yes. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, as Frank has stated, I'm Dwayne Randolph. I'm the uh, general contractor with Randolph Construction Group, and we are a local minority builder with over 23 years experience, uh, most of which has been building multiple and I'm sorry, multi and, and single family home communities and scattered sites throughout Palm Beach and Broward counties. Um, as Frank has already stated, we are currently now building a two-story home at Boynton Beach, where 80% of our major tier subcontractors are Boynton Beach businesses, uh, along with finishing up a few renovation projects in the Boynton Beach area, uh, essentially with the same identical mix of subcontractors uh, being Boynton Beach businesses. Um, the Boynton Delray area is where I've grown up. It's uh, where I work. It's where I worship at New Disciples Worship Center over off Northeast 12th Avenue. Um, this project site is less than two miles from our office. Um, and, and again, this city is like home to me. And um, I'm just very excited about the opportunity. Um, we believe firmly in local employment and advancement. And in addition to us being the general contractor for this project, we'll be hiring and providing mentorship opportunities for the local workforce pool. Uh, employing local minority subcontractors and material suppliers throughout the duration. As Frank has stated, you know, we'll use this opportunity to, pr to prepare and assist, uh, to prop up and to propel, if you will, the local Boynton workforce and to do our part uh, to prepare the field for the next generation. Uh, we want to leave the city and community with added value. And with that, I'll turn it back to Frank. Uh, yes, thank you, Randolph. Uh, just wanted to give a minute to uh, to also Katora to talk a little bit. I mean, she's been involved in Boynton Beach, and she's uh, helping us in terms of identify the future owners uh, of of these residents. Uh, Katora, are you here? Jan? She's there. Put her on. Yes, I, I am here. Yes. Good evening, okay. everyone. I'm Katira Joseph with Boynton Beach CDC. Can you all hear me? Yes, yes we can. Okay, I I am the executive director of the only nonprofit affordable housing developer in Boynton Beach. We've been around since 1999 for 21 years. We That's were started by a group of local 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 community residents who wanted to bring a change in the exact areas that we're talking about right now the heart of Boynton which is where this project is, is is going to be developed we have been here for a while we are very local we've worked with the city we've worked with the CRA we've worked with the local residents here we've built a, a, a tremendous amount of new housing of we, we purchased acquired uh, purchased renovated and sold we also, and, and the key thing that we're going to do with this project, I think, is we're going to provide intensive home buyer education to the, to the buyers, of, to the first people who need that, who will be buying in this project. What we do is intensive home buying financial education because we believe strongly that an educated home buyer is a successful home buyer. There's a difference in being a home buyer and being a successful home buyer. So we we are here. We 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 embrace this project. We love this project, and we want to do everything we can to make it successful. So, in, in you know, in conjunction with Wayne, the Wayne, the Randolph Group, and us, we are as local as you get to make this project as successful as we can make it. That's my pitch. Thank you, Kitora. Uh, th this is pretty much what uh, what what we have. What we wanted to convey. Uh, again, there's a lot more information in the RFP, but we didn't want to bore you too much tonight. Uh, if we uh, have a couple more minutes, we can go and, and answer a question on the site. Plan. I know there's always a question about the, uh, the, the site plan, so if we go back up in the previous slides. Um, yes. This is, um, so this is what we have. Uh, if I may answer any questions, so if we may answer any questions. Yeah, I think it was brought up earlier. Uh, um, so is will this one be an HOA as well? Yes. Okay. And then um, the educated home buyer, is that um, how to keep your house maintained or what does that really mean? 
that is everything from financial education, getting them credit, re credit ready to be able to afford a mortgage. If they have any credit issues, we help them solve it, how to maintain their home, how to keep it, how to all the maintenance and everything that is involved with becoming an educated and successful homeowner. So we start with them from scratch. And what we will do is identify local people in the community that want to buy a house and we will start working with them so that by the time those houses are ready, they're ready to become homeowners. Okay, well then within the HOA, the exteriors are maintained by the HOA. Um, so it's really, you know, uh, keeping up interiors, correct? Yes. Thank you. But also understanding that you have to pay your dues to the HOA. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. I know, um, which I shouldn't have asked the other two developers. I know when there's a new development coming, uh, the previous developer mentioned bringing the lender. Are you guys giving any lenders incentive to the um, future buyers when it comes to these properties? Well, in terms of incentives, I mean, we're not a bank. I mean, we're the developers. We build it. We're going to facilitate transaction. We're going to provide banks that we know uh, that are going to be easy for people to work with. Again, the idea is to provide access to people who may be not used to be homeowners. We're going to be first-time homeowners. They might not have, you know, a lot of credit or a lot of money. Uh, this is supposed to be for affordable. Okay? So the, the idea was to keep everything as low as possible and I, I don't really have as per se a, a budget to 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 give them but by working very hard to building real full quality homes uh at a lower price uh they'll be able to uh they'll be able to afford it with a very minimum deposit and that's and that and that's what we do as well frank excuse me what we do when we work with our home buyers is we access any assistance that's out there for them down payment assistance program to the state, the county, or the, or the city. We we access, we help them access that. And that's what we are, that's our expertise, all the down payment assistance programs that are out there. We help them get access to that to assist them with the home buying process. Thank you. Uh, I have a question and for some clarification. <laughs> Um, are an HOA, HOA docs can say whatever HOA docs want to say. Um, I wouldn't assume that the HOA docs would maintain the exterior of the building necessarily. And I, I don't as think a, we're there yet, but. As a community, usually the HOA is responsible for maintaining the outside and common areas uh, but again the only way to ensure uh, the, uh, the full maintenance of the property is uh, basically if we stay the owners the, the first proposal we propose the CRA and uh, we propose the rental community uh, but the CRA wanted definitely ownership uh, in this location uh, right. once we sell the properties unfortunately I, I cannot bind people uh, to any kind of more constraint than they can uh, legally bind them well, I, I guess I'm just looking for clarification. I mean, the HOA docs or whatever we make, whatever the HOA comes up with. Um, Two hours later. I suspect that, you know, you, yeah, you could do that, but to it's not a given, I should say, it, to have it take care of the exterior of the house. Like, I get it. Could be. Um, any more questions from the board before we go to the public? There are two questions from the public if you'd like to move to our web. Yes. Okay. Uh, Susan Royer, I believe you're self muted. Yeah, um, you guys told me I could comment at the end so I'll wait till the end of all five thank you well 
was, was there another member from the public? Bernard Wright. Mr. Wright, uh, Bernard Wright has a, uh, a question. One second and we'll find you and unmute you. Okay, um, Mr. Wright. No. You're self muted, Mr. Wright. Yes, can you hear me, Mike? Yes, sir. Okay, here's what I'd like to ask. It was a question also having to do with HUD. Uh, when redeveloping in a city, doesn't there have to be, uh, I mean, 70% uh, assistance from HUD for, you know, renters coming in? In respect to affordable housing? Uh, no, no, sir. And this is a home ownership community, not a rental. So none of it would be rental? None of it would be rental. It's all home ownership. Okay, well, now let me ask something regarding that second presenter with 230, $250,000, $280,000 home. Uh, you're in the heart of Boynton Beach. Uh, that is a lot of money. So you're really not making them affordable for. You know, any one of us over here in District 2 in the heart of Boynton, we're talking about the heart of Boynton over here. Uh, you're really not making it affordable for us just with that kind of price on it. I want you to know that, and we all know this. So we don't even have, a, you know, a ghost of a chance of getting in. So it's still gentrification coming in, no matter how you look at it. It don't matter the skin color, who you bring in, you bring a higher income into a city. Without equity of those many homes being available for these people in this district, right over here, where I'm talking about between 9th Avenue, especially in 13th Avenue, over here, in this heart of Bourne, where I'm living in Bourne Hills, especially so. If there's not a number of equity homes there, I don't care what. You make the program ready for us how we need to get in there. If we got to increase our credit, it doesn't matter. Uh, if there is someone making that kind of money and many of us are, that can afford to get in there, then those are to be there for us. I mean, that's equity. And we're right now talking about racial justice in respect to our economy you understand in wealth building and things of that nature love everything about local and that but man what about us over here i have uh, yeah, look man look, look look it's a long conversation but we need to talk and we really need to have a conversation and that is with all of these presenters that's coming in here we need a community meeting before we even talk about making an approval for any one of them coming in here because i don't think none of us right now hearing on us are a part of this conversation Yes, new discipleship and that coming of those members that are part of that, of course, good. But man, it's not enough of us yet. Us leaders over here. None of you all will ever contact me about redeveloping. You developers that's coming in right now saying you want to get in touch with the leaders. I'm a leader in this city, Bishop Bernardi Wright, and you all know it. No one can even stand pound for pound of we're talking about accomplishments for the better for the people inside of this city. My voice is heard. It's loud and clear. But you, my number is there for you. None of them have gotten in contact with me. I mean, listen, your pastors and all of them that you're getting in contact with, they're not really leaders of the city. They just hold authority in the city inside of their church. Look, man, I'm asking you all to please consider me around the table in the conversation about redeveloping in a city that I have legacy and heritage in. To God be the glory. I mean, listen, you all do not answer folks when they come up. As Susan came up, I came up and I spoke. You do this in the city commission meeting. You never address us. It's like we don't even matter. To God be the glory. I mean, at least, man, give us the common courtesy to say, we will take this on the advisement, but you are speaking. I mean, hey, man, come on. It's too much. You all up there sitting on the dais and on these boards. You understand with these different professions you come out, but you don't have a next a connection with the people inside of the district and city that you're talking about making decisions on. You all don't know five parents, no five children to ride by us around inside this city. Yeah. I mean, this is sad. It's sickening. You don't get in contact with me. You understand? Okay. All right. Or do you have any further comments before we go on to the next person? The three minutes were up. Um, let's go on to the next presenter. Okay. Next presenter is uh, Pulte Home Company LLC. And in Thank one second, you. we'll have their uh presentation up okay. and this is andrew maxi right Maxie. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, Andrew, you're you're live. We can hear you. All right, great. Good evening, uh, Michael and CA staff and the advisory board. We thank you for uh, your consideration of, of all the proposals tonight. Um, I'm representing Multi Homes Company, and with me tonight, Michael, you can actually go ahead and advance the next slide as well. So with me tonight is uh, Ame Carlson, who's our Director of Land Planning, and she's going to be taking us through the uh, design features of our site plan and our architecture. Uh, and then also um, included on this project is our Division President, Brent Baker, uh, and our Vice President of Land, Patrick Gala. So um, between the four principals we have on the project, we have over 60 years of experience uh, in real estate and home building here locally. Um, we manage a team of over 120 employees. Uh, our office is locally based here in Palm County, and we're one of the big builders in our market. Uh, we're a national home builder who does, um, you know, market rate and affordable housing projects here in the county. Uh, in addition to Pulte, we hired a, you know, very talented and local team. Uh, the Wantman groups who we've hired to assist with our land planning and landscape architecture services. Uh, Wattman Group completed several projects within the sea. Um, a couple of note, the Sarah Sims uh, Park Master Plan, um, as well as the Seacrest Corridor Utility Improvement Project, where they were the lead design and construction administrator. Uh, in addition to WGI, uh, we have St. Nelson and Associates on our team. Uh, Sophia Nelson and Chariz Adams are both on the call tonight. Uh, they're going to be spearheading our community outreach effort and our local hiring effort. Um, they have extensive experience in the city as well. Uh, they spearheaded the outreach and public involvement effort on the uh, Town Square project in Boynton. Next slide, please. So this slide just highlights uh, really some of our experience. As you can see, we're one of the biggest you know, holders in the market. Um, and we are getting into a full housing. Obviously, there's a workforce housing ordinance associated with uh, Palm Beach County. And as part of that, uh, as builders, we are going to be bringing affordable housing to the community. Um, historically, most of the builders, uh, as we all know, has have bought out of that obligation. Uh, there used to be an in-lieu fee that you can pay. Uh, but now we're moving toward actually building these products. And I'm pr really proud to say that uh, Pulte is actually the first uh, market rate builder to build an all single family or all affordable housing community um, in the city. Uh, we just last year broke ground uh, on a project called Mary Place. Uh, which is a partnership with the uh, Housing Authority in uh, the city of West Palm Beach. Um, and uh, we're really excited about that project, and it's really the only one of its kind. It's all market rate units uh, built by Pulte Homes. Um, in addition to that, we just this year had a partnership with the CRA down in the city of Lauderdale Lakes, uh, where we closed on a property with them. Uh, the time from when we put it under contract to when we closed was actually just a little bit under uh, four months. So it was a, a very quick quick project, the CRA down there uh, in Broward County. In terms of what we're proposing tonight, and we'll go through our development plan, we're proposing 40 units, uh, it's a mix of single family and townhomes. And, um, and the big point here I just want to make is we're not proposing uh, any type of financing contingencies or CRA subsidies or any other type of tax credit source, be it a TIF, any other type of uh, financing credit. So uh, we're going to fund this project 100% with our own money, uh, and we do not intend to make a profit on this project. Uh, in terms of the payment for the land, uh, Pulte is actually uh, proposing to pay the CRA for the property. So the total purchase price for the property we're proposing is around $442,000, and that's a combination of uh, consideration for land combined with some market payments, which will be paid um, on the back end of the project. Uh, and then finally, just uh, the last high level point I wanted to make was, you know, focus on on local vendors. Uh, we have six subcontractors that, that are actually already the vendors that work here in the city. And I'll go through those uh, in a little bit more detail um, later in the presentation. Michael, can you the next slide, please? All right, and now I hand it off to Ame Carlson, who will go through the project plan that we have proposed here in the Cottage District. Mm 
I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm looking for her to unmute her. Okay, I may. Okay, thank you. Uh, as Andrew mentioned, we're very excited to share our proposal with the advisory board and CRA staff tonight. Um, our plan was created after careful review of the CRA plan, the design guidelines that were included in the RFP, uh, feedback from the surrounding community. We spent quite a bit of time researching uh, previous minutes and, and uh, understanding what the surrounding community had provided in terms of comments about the development of the cottage district. And then also looked at the requirements that were contained in the RFP itself. So at the top of the slide, what you see is a, um, a streetscape. And this is actually what we're showing on our site plan, what, uh, what you'd see on Northeast uh, 1st Street. Um, so we're proposing a mix of uh, both attached uh, single family units or townhome units and then detached uh, single family units. It's a mix of one and two story units. They are all uh, fee simple units. So if you can go to the next slide, please. And as I mentioned, our plan is uh, responsive to the CRA plan and the requirements that are contained in the RFP as well as community feedback. So I'll just kind of walk you through the site plan here. On the north side, um, which is Northeast uh, Fifth, um, we've got townhome units. And uh, different than some of the other plans you've seen tonight, our units, all, uh, the majority of our units actually address the street. So our units are integrated into the surrounding community rather than walling ourselves off and being more internally focused. We're proposing a, a plan that will actually be part of the community. And, you know, it's consistent with the way neighborhoods developed over time. You know, it's not separate, it's part of the community. But the townhomes, again, are on the north side. And then as you move down, um, there is a, a, a large uh, a pocket park um, that would also include the bus shelter that is a goal of the CRA. There's some off street parking here. And then there's a, a multi-use uh, dry detention area to its west. Both the park and the detention area that can be used for recreation, like playing, you know, soccer or just walking, there's a trail around it. Um, those will both be open to the surrounding community. So they would eventually be deeded to the city, but would be maintained at our HOA's cost and would be open to the, the residents of the surrounding community. And then as we transition down first and then also uh, fronting on fourth, we have our single family units, our detached single family units. And, you know, based on some of the feedback that we had um, understood was provided previously, we tried to be respectful of the, the parcels that are, um, I hesitate to use fold out parcels, but the parcels that are not included with, within the parcels that the CRA had purchased. And so, you know, we don't have a street, for example, terminating at the Oyer property. We've got a nice buffer there. Um, and then we've got a buffer around both of the, uh, the single family units along 4th Avenue. Um, really just to try to be respectful neighbors. <clears throat> and also on Northeast uh, First Street, we have some off street, uh, par excuse me, on street parking, and that'll help kind of provide some street calming, which again is a goal of the CRA plan and provide some additional parking uh, for the residents. And as Andrew mentioned, we have a total of uh, 40 units. Um, it's uh, nine uh, single family units and 31 attached townhomes. I just wanna speak briefly on our architecture um, in reviewing the plans that the CRA had provided. That's how we were sort of inspired by our architectural styles. We're providing, uh, proposing two styles of Florida Mediterranean, which would be consistent with the plans, uh, Mediterranean revival, and then a Florida coastal which really draws from Boynton Beach's coastal identity and is consistent with one of the styles that was identified by the CRA. Both plans have unique features and uh, architectural elements and design features that further those uh, styles. And if we can go to the next slide here. And I'm just gonna briefly run through, I'm not gonna you know, talk about each one, but we've got, um, Pulte's very proud of our plans. Um, one of the things that we do that's unique among um, national builders is, you know, we do a lot of uh, consumer research. We say our plans are consumer driven. 
Uh, there's extensive uh, consumer research in creating the plans. We actually go to the, the point of building prototypical plans before we bring them to market in warehouses and have focus groups and people that would, would eventually buy the homes walk through and provide feedback. So our homes are really reflective of the desires of our buyers. So our single family detached uh, plans, they are, um, we've got three different plans that we've proposed here and you can just uh, go scroll through the slides here. Um, they range from about a little over 2000 square feet to just under 2400 square feet. They are either three or four bedrooms, um, two baths, and then they all have two car garages and they are all one story plans. And then we've got, um, if you wanna go to the next slide, we have two uh, townhome plans that are provided. Can you go back though, please? Yeah, two townhome plans. Um, those are ranging between 1874 and uh, 2084. Uh, square feet that's total square feet they are three bedroom uh, plans with two and a half baths they're two stories and they either have a one car garage if they're an interior plan or a two car garage and i'm going to turn it back to andrew and he's going to talk about the uh, financials thank you all right thanks Ame. so as far as the project costs go um we're projecting a budget of eight eight point four million to total cost to deliver the 40 units. Uh, as I mentioned before, this will be 100% cash funded by Poly as the developer. Um, and as part of that, as I mentioned, there's a $450,000 purchase price consideration, uh, $200,000 pay the front end, and the back end marketing fee, as we're calling it, is basically a, a 3% um, marketing fee that will be paid to CRA for assistance in marketing and selling this property. Uh, obviously, or, or the individual units rather. Um, obviously, we're going to have several partners. We'll have, say, Nelson helping us with, you know, seeing some local buyers. Uh, of course, we're going to work with the Palm County Office of Housing and Economic Sustainability uh, to work through um, some of the, um, you know, income qualification um, uh, parameters. Uh, but we also work with the CRA, and we want to give the CRA an opportunity to get involved. Uh, and benefit from this project, um, both from a you know community perspective, but then also from a financial perspective as well. So, uh, so this is what we're, we're proposing here. Um, in terms of you know the uh, sales prices, which is not specifically listed on this slide, but I did want to mention, I believe we are, and I know we have one more presenter, but I believe we are unique in that we actually are offering the lowest uh, level workforce housing um, sales price. Uh, of 166,000 per unit. So 25% of our 40 homes will be at that $166,000 price point. So we're really low. Uh, we're really getting at that 40% AMI. People have a household income of, you know, $50,000. So uh, we're targeting buyer, you know, a quarter of our sales. Um, we're targeting to be in that range. So we're not just going after the top end. Um, and that's reflected here in our financials as well. Uh, Michael, if you could advance to the next slide. Uh, this just goes into a little bit more detail on the cost model. Um, of the 84 million, um, approximately 1.5 of that is what we consider to be, you know, land development. Um, and then approximately $6 million will be attributed to the vertical cost of construction. Um, and in the RFP mentioned some potential subsidies and some potential impact fee credits. We didn't miss any of that. Uh, so these are credits as they are, the impact fees as they are today. Uh, so we did not assume any type of reduction in these costs. So these are the costs as we would build them for you know, any market rate project. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so going back to the, the local contractors. So the great news is uh, today, Pulte already has six bidders who work within the city. Um, they, they range uh, from drywall contractors uh, to uh, shell contractors to flooring and plumbing. So a big portion of the house, we all know we can build locally. Uh, in addition to that, we'll work with, you know, S. Nelson to, you know, branch out and look who else we can bring on the team. Um, and even even better, two of the six vendors that we have already uh, are within the CRA limits. 
Uh, so uh, we feel really good about our local team and our ability to bring in local vendors and local trades uh, to this great project. Um, and to, to finish that point, uh, Mike, if you could advance to the final slide, um, I'm going to hand it off to, uh, I believe, Charisma, uh, who will focus on our community outreach and hiring effort. Okay. Hello, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I had some trouble unmuting. Um, I'm Charisma Adams, and I'm a part of the SA Nelson and Associates team, and we're so excited to potentially be a part of another building opportunity here in Boynton Beach. Um, we understand Boynton Beach's approach to community wealth building through our prior work in this community on various development projects. Um, over the past three years, we've been working continually in the city of Boynton Beach on various projects, and this has allowed us to build a strong database of local partners, contractors, skilled and unskilled laborers. So uh, within the phases that you see, um, you'll see listed on the next slide, if you want to go over. Thank you. Uh, within that li phases listed on this slide, um, our outreach efforts will primarily consist of um, assessing the current local SBE and MWBE contractor pool, and then broadcasting through our various marketing vehicles, which will include telephone, text, door hangers, flyer distribution, fairs, digital media, and paid ads, all of the available bidding, contract, and labor opportunities for this project. Um, we also plan to engage local nonprofits and churches, some of which you see listed there, to assist with identification of buyers and capacity building of labor through training, bonding, and some other available programs to help bridge any potential capacity deficits. And then lastly, we plan to also maintain regular communication with the CRA, the community and project stakeholders through community meetings, site activities and presentations. Um, it is really our commitment to implement a strong outreach program that'll list, that'll link together your contractors, your local workforce and local community partners to this project so that we can create some long-term economic opportunities and ultimately benefit the residents and the families of Boynton Beach. Because we know that's what that commitment from the city, that program, as well as the CRA, that's what that's all about. Thank you. Thanks, Charisma. Hey, Michael, that, that concludes Pulte's presentation. And at this point, we will uh, be happy to turn that over to the advisory board. Can we go back to the site plan, please? Um, a large, I think you mentioned, you know, they're outward facing, um, have you given any thought to what they're actually facing and, um, is, is there, I think we've, we've talked in the past about, is there any, anything that can be done in the way of incentives or activity to improve, uh, you know the look and feel of the homes on the other side of the street that these would these would be facing if we adopt the outward facing as opposed to the inward where everything everything that everybody looks at would be you know uh nice and new are you okay. asking if we have given thought to the 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 units that are not part of this uh, site and um, you know retro retrofitting them beautifying them is that the question uh, no not necessarily the buildings themselves but anything that might make you know the all the townhomes on the north and the ones on the south 
uh, that are looking at the pre-existing homes. Um, you know, is there, you know, uh, I'm, you know looking at Google Earth, um, you know, there's not much landscape, treescape um, to make what that homeowner sees, you know, and, you know, walk in and out of every day um, as new and attractive as the other ones that we've seen that are, you know, sort of inward looking and looks like a nice, you know, very similar community. Yeah, sure. So, so uh, uh, around the perimeter, we've got um, a perimeter sidewalk, um, which is one of the CRA goals, and then uh, landscaping, and then our units. Um, again, this, there's a lot of detailed design guidelines that were contained in the RFP like um, minimizing the garage and um, uh, having sort of like some ins and outs um, with, with some articulation of the units and stuff. So our facades are reflective of that, um, but you know, we are creating a nice, a nice streetscape around the block, if you will. And then particularly along uh, Northeast First, um, we've got the on-street parking um, with the opportunity for added um, street trees that will provide a uh, street calming and you know a nice a nice atmosphere as you're walking along that street um, board, board if i may interject the the term out facing in this particular case saw in the other site plans you're i think the reference is a rear loaded garage that you would enter off of the behind the building versus driveways on the street this is a similar layout in the, the respect that they are they are street facing, uh, similar to the other ones. So um, I don't think that this particular site plan is creating any more visibility of the of the street than than the others that were there. And none of the proposers, uh, all five, none of the five, presented any information or or commitment. To uh, the idea that was posed in the RFP and not a requirement, but it was a it was a question of of what kind of commitment could be made. None of the five uh, proposed any type of, of community halo uh, effect type project in their proposal. It doesn't mean that later down the road in negotiation there might be some way the CRA could help them do that, but uh, none of them had a a particular program that they created for the neighboring properties. If that right. Helped. I understand that. So, um, maybe I maybe I'm slightly misunderstanding the way that these lay out. So, when you say, um, um, I forget which street it would be. Would it be Fourth Street on the north or Fifth? Fifth on the north. Okay. So, if if I'm driving along Fifth and I pull into the house, is that really the back of the house? It's the front of the house. Okay, so uh, yeah, so my, you know, just my observation is that, you know, coming out of the house, the front of the house looks, looks to the opposite side, the other, the, with the uh, inward looking layouts, they, they seem to look at the you know, they all seem to look at the nice new neighborhood. Okay. Can I, can I talk about aesthetically living in this particular site? You would be living where you're looking at more green space because your living areas are to the rear of the property. So you drive into the front of your garage and then you go in and you look out and you see green space. If the garages or the entrance are the other way, when you're in the back of the house, you are looking at the other neighborhoods in the back of you, do you follow? So you have to think of how you're living in these homes, not the aesthetics of the exterior. So I actually find this very attractive for actually living in the property and what you would be in your master bedroom, kitchen, family room looking at. Okay. Yeah, so I'll take a look at the floor plan along with how it sits and better understand that. 
right? Uh, if I may, um, yeah, this, this, let me see, this is my favorite site plan. <laughs> um, I like the way that we engage because we we don't want to wall this off. We want it to to integrate into the the, the neighborhood, if it will. Um, and the way they integrated, you know, parking for a park that makes sense. Um, I suspect that this big uh, green square in the middle is maybe retention. Um, I would I would love to see if I ruled the world. I would I would love to see porches on the front of these houses, so, you know, even if they're small. Um, but um, the site plan uh, really works for me. It engages engages the neighborhood around, but it also has um, amenities and, and enough green space, and it's just well laid out. And um, uh, so kudos kudos on the site plan. Think about it. It's a big space. Okay. Yeah. Um, are there any, are there any, are there any more comments from the board, or do you want to go to the public? I have one last um, question. I, as I believe I understood, the property prices are about one hundred and sixty-six thousand. Per unit, is that correct? So uh, our proposal for the the home prices are going to be um, will be evenly distributed between the different um, our fourth housing categories in the county. So Twenty five percent will be at the hundred and sixty six thousand dollar price point. The others, so I can read them out to you. They'll be they'll be four. They'll be one hundred and sixty six thousand. Be the low. They'll have one that is in the $213,000 range. Then we'll have a third, two sixty one, and then we'll have a fourth that's three oh eight. So the average will be around two twenty, somewhere in there. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, which I suspect is uh, rightly priced for that neighborhood and what that neighborhood is going to become. And not not for nothing, but in the development world, we're building and selling houses like hotcakes right now. So the market is hot, hot, hot. Is that the last comment from the board before the public, if there is anyone other than Susan? Golan, did you want to say something? Board member, Gordon? Yes, yeah. yes, please. Thank you very much. Um, the question I'm, I have actually, I know the other developers mentioned about HOA, and I didn't hear anything about HOA in this um, um, development. Mr. Baker, do you guys have any HOA in mind, or is just going to be an open community? <laughs> Do you we guys will have an HOA. We will have an HOA, and the HOA will be maintaining um, the, the the common areas, the, the exterior landscaping. Um, yeah, I mentioned the park that will be deeded to the city, but the HOA will uh, retain the maintenance obligation for the park. And a, do you have a range in the pricing as well? For the HOA dues, um, yeah. you no, know, not at this time. It's, it's, you know, again, like you know, one of the other proposers. Uh, obviously, when you're dealing with workforce housing, you want to keep that as as low as possible, and we'll we will work towards that. Okay, thank you. Okay, there's no other hands raised other than Susan Oyers. Um, I'm assuming Susan said she wanted to wait till the end. Okay. So, board, do you have any further comments or, or do you want to move on to the next? Just... Yeah. Anyone? Okay. Go on to the next uh, one. The fifth and final uh, proposer this evening is 
uh, ACE Development Group LLC, and uh, that individual uh, is, we're getting him unmuted. Australian, right there. Sorry, I'm sure I didn't spell that. Sound. You're self muted. This by Astrid. Astrid? Astro, uh, so you're uh, self muted. There you can go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. I just want to start off and say thank you uh, for this uh, wonderful opportunity to present. I know um, time is of the essence, and I won't take up too much of everyone's time. So uh, let's get right into it. Um, my name is Astro Lane Joe Su. I'm one of the managing partners over here at ACE Development. Uh, we're a real estate development firm with a combined development experience of 30 years through acquisitions, development, design, and construction. Our projects, along with our strategic partner, Emerald Construction, has ranged in ground up multifamily, townhomes, condominiums, and retail plazas. Uh, some of our projects our team has worked on has been the Lexi, which is a 164-unit condominium in North Bay Village, the Aloff uh, Doral, in, uh, uh, which is a 125-key hotel, um, the shops at 19th Street, which is a retail plaza over in Fort Lauderdale. Um, for the most part, our network is vast, ranging from equity partners, general contractors, architects, civil engineers, along with um, land use attorneys. And we've worked um, tirelessly with uh, government agencies uh, throughout Palm Beach County and also on the west coast of Florida as well, too. Um, we recognize that uh, we join forces to respond to this RFP as we see potential to accomplish a common goal. Um, we see that with this particular project, it's almost as if it's like a blank canvas where we're kind of brushing and painting our thoughts and ideas and inputs in order to create this masterpiece of which we call Boynton Cottage Village. Um, Boynton College Village, excuse me, Boynton College Village is a 73 unit residential project um, that will include a housing diversity of different incomes. Um, the housing stock will include tiny homes, um, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and three bedrooms. Uh, the project is catering to the working class, along with families, entry-level professionals, millennials, and empty nesters. Uh, the development is situated to create a strong and active neighborhood um, wh while, we're while we're utilizing the street edge. Um, we're creating an environment that invites the community, but most importantly, it um, brings togetherness in neighborhood pocket park it. Um, with that intersection between Northeast 4th Ave and um, 1st Street. Um, our, as I'm looking at you right now, can you um, move Michael to the slide to um, the, uh, the site plan so I can kind of go a little more in depth? Thank you. So um, as you're looking over in the site plan, um, you'll see where we're comprising a lot of green space along with um, highlighting a, um, a few amenities where we're adding a public pocket um, park which is um, um, located on the uh, southeast corner um, of uh, First Street. And then at the same time, uh, we have also a courtyard pool. Um, when you do look at the, the units, if you are inside of the units, um, the units kind of give you a sense of, of green space that you'll be able to see once you walk in um, and from the viewpoint of the backyard. Um, along with that, we also kind of created a bicycle, bicycle station because of the fact that the proximity of the uh, the project is so um, so located well in terms of just the downtown corridor, the beaches, and so forth. That we wanted to incorporate that 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 amenity in itself. Um, we also incorporated live work units because we do recognize that with the pandemic um, um, highlighting such major issues for people that are looking to work from home, uh, we kind of added that single component into it, which would have been like a real nice uh, creative aspect of it um, towards this project. Um, street lights are on the southwest uh, district where you would uh, be able to see on the site plan. Um, and if we uh, move over to the next slide, um, the next slide will basically be able to highlight what we call the uh, missing uh, middle housing, which is a range of house scale buildings with multiple units. Um, as you'll see, the uh, live work units um, face um, either on Northeast Fifth Avenue and also on Northeast uh, Fourth Ave with the remaining units being uh, one stories and two stories and three stories um, comprising of one bedrooms, two bedrooms and three bedrooms. 25% um, of our, our, our housing that we're delivering is gonna be dedicated to workforce housing. 
um, the price points that we are starting from will be between $100,000 all the way up to $262,000. Um, next slide, please. So this is basically the green, the open green spaces, um, just like a, a, a really good way in which you can kind of like understand um, from just the vantage point of a person that's actually owning a property in, in this community where they would be able to just like go outside, barbecue, but yet at the same time, you would still have this wonderful space to, to view. Um, you have also that dog park, um, which I didn't highlight in the beginning, um, which is definitely going to be key, especially for um, pet owners. And the fact that, you know, you have this beautiful courtyard and um, the pool amenity as well that, you know, this neighborhood would be definitely able to share. Um, this project is also going to be HOA. So part of the HOA will be able to cover the common areas along with the exterior of the park as well, too. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, we basically kind of showcase the uh, circulation in which, you know, from the pedestrians uh, vantage and also the shared uses in which, you know, it kind of just like brings this village style community together. Um, on the next slide, um, you can kind of see where the floor plans are in terms of just like seeing how the live work units uh, are kind of comprised where it's about 18, 18 by 63 feet. And then um, when we go all the way up to the uh, first First floor is with the one bedrooms, one bath, we're about 650 square feet. And then the second, um, the second uh, component would be the two bedrooms, two baths at 1,050 square feet and the three bedrooms and two and a half baths, which is uh, about approximately 1,450 square feet. Um, what we did uh, most importantly is, is that um, we've kind of um, put the, the uh, parking um, where the alley would be. So uh, you don't necessarily see the actual um, parking in the front, it would actually be parking in the back. So it kind of gives a much more cleaner, but yet um, aesthetically pleasing look to this project. Um, if you scroll down um, to the next slide, we're basically showcasing the, um, the architectural examples um, alongside with just like the elevations on how it would look in terms of just like the live work units all the way up to the three bedrooms, two and a half baths. Um, the three and a half baths along with the, the two bedroom, two bath um, homes will have porches. Um, so that's going to be very uh, unique, especially for the fact that a person is buying into a, a, a housing product and it doesn't typically come in with, um, with um, um, porches per se. Uh, some of our construction methods into um, utilizing this um, project will be to go about with modular units. Um, we've um, got in contact with our GC partner, Emma Construction, in which, you know, we were able to get some um, real compelling uh, construction costs in order to actually deliver these units in a very cost-effective manner. Um, if you scroll down to the uh, next slide, we're basically highlighting the, the street cross-sections in terms of just like the frontage zones along with the pedestrian zones and um, how the travel lanes kind of coexist with the, with the um, streetscape of the project itself. Um, next slide kind of goes into the development inspirations in terms of like some of the, the projects that we kind of seen that we could kind of emulate, but then also um, work with the CRA in terms of just like, you know, making sure that this project is sufficient for the uh, area itself. So there's a few projects, um, some, some that are actually uh, where a few developers on this um, have done over here as well. Um, the next slide is basically uh, showcasing the uh, project financials where we're committing um, at a land acquisition of $730,000 and a total development cost of about $16.6 .6 million. Um, we have commitment uh, for, with, with one bank, which is um, Valley Bank. And at the same time, we've also um, got in contact with a few other banks as well too, Community Loan Fund and we also have commitments with um, equity partners um, ranging in from ranging in from um, equity partners that that pretty much um, excuse me I'm sorry I'm, I'm a little bit thirsty <laughs> I'm sorry about that uh, we have equity partners uh, ranging in all the way from South Florida up to uh, New York um, who is looking to park uh, some capital and deploy capital into these type of projects which is um, workforce driven. Um, last slide is basically just kind of showcasing just our team 
um, where I'm basically the partner in charge. Um, the construction is uh, Romero Mez of Emerald Construction. Um, financing housing is done with uh, Jasmine Baldwin. Um, our legal team will be able to structure the HOA, which is Ronnie Bronstein. And um, we are also dedicating 15% um, of our local subcontractors to perform labor um, from this construction, um, being that be coming from um, the local market of Boynton Beach. Um, I think uh, if anyone has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Boy, crickets. That bad or is that good? <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you so much for presenting. Um, for me, one of the important things that I definitely want to look at is um, pricing because we, I do really care about affordable housing uh, and making sure that everyone has access to purchasing their own property. Um, so that was, that was my next question for you guys. Uh, can you elaborate on what the property pricing would be? I understand, you know, you have like the really small, um, tiny homes and then you have the one bedrooms, the two bedrooms, and then the three bedrooms. Um, so I just wanted to elaborate a little bit on, on that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we kind of recognize that um, being that we would be delivering um, tiny homes along with um, uh, two bedrooms and three bedrooms, we're, we're, yeah, we're in the parameters of the workforce housing program in which we have um, moderate uh, income to uh, moderate incomes in terms of just the AMIs between 80 to 100% AMI and also 100% to 120% AMI where the price points would um, go as low as 100,000 and then we can kind of go up to 261,000 give or take. That's pretty good, thank you so much. In your opinion, when we discuss workforce housing, what types of what types of income that you're aware of what we be looking at as far as uh, where where one would need to earn in order to qualify? So when you're looking at um, and that's a good question. When you're looking at um, the uh, AMIs between it to 100% AMI. You're looking at the household um, range between somewhere of like 63,000, 79,000, uh, give or take. Um, and then uh, when we get to the highest point, which is our three bedrooms, two baths, and we're essentially pricing them at about 61,000, um, that price point is somewhere um, falling in between 79,000 and 94,000 with an AMI of 100 to 120 percent. Um, but most importantly, I think that. What's compelling is the fact that you know we're utilizing new type of uh, stock, um, housing stock that's not really common in a lot of projects, which is the tiny homes, and that kind of falls in between where the lowest uh, um, income in terms of 60 to 80 percent would be able to find that 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 aspect of the sales price itself. Okay, thank you. May I ask, make a comment? Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I think that there's part of this could it could be absolutely adorable, but I do have concerns that it could go really awry when you have one bedroom, 450 square foot properties that's not family oriented. My worry is it's going to turn into Airbnb or people that only live here six months out of the year and that it's going to have a higher HOA to maintain it with all the um, different green spaces, the pool, dog park, stuff like that. I don't know. Just yeah, and that's my immediate thoughts are that it could go really good or really bad. Yeah, and I appreciate your um, comment, Sharon. Um, and it's it's actually a great point um, for everyone to kind of take notice of. It's because of the fact that when you're talking about a tiny home that's being 450 square feet, 
uh, keep in mind, our HOAs are going to be centrally focused on making sure that we don't necessarily have short-term rentals. Um, that's a big thing that most communities don't. Um, I think that if we were considering short-term rentals, then we would probably want to look at a different project. But when you look at those live work units, which is the 400 square feet, those cater to a different type of uh, audience, which is like your artists, where the artists that are priced out of Delray Beach, they're looking for that type of uh, project to stay in or housing to stay in, in which, you know, they're just only 10 minutes away from Delray, but at the same time, you're still able to live in that unit and also work in that unit, per se. I hope that answered it. So do those artists normally buy or rent? Typically, the artists uh, rent, um, but at the same time, also artists do buy. Um, and what we've done was is that we're going to be working in conjunction uh, with a few organizations in terms of just like our outreach program in order to get artists to come in um, to actually um, acquire these type of uh, properties per se. We've seen it work through uh, live work units over in Lake Worth um, in the downtown uh, district. Um, so we kind of recognize that that is essential um, for type of um, um, products to be delivered for this. And I think that, you know, that's where we have this conscious effort of just uh, utilizing an outreach program along with understanding what is necessary for them. All right, uh, Mike, let's go ahead and open up for public comment. Okay. Uh, Susan Oyer and Katura Joseph. Uh, Susan Oyer and Katura Joseph. Uh, Katura. Yes. Um. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, yes. Yes. Um, Mr. Barber, I think. Yes, Mr. Mr. Barber, I think you asked the question of what income. What when we talk about workforce housing, what what the income is? Is was that your question? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, so I'm looking at the Palm Beach County chart for 2020, and I'll give you an example. When we talk about works for housing, we're looking at 120 to 140% of AMI, okay? For a household of four, they can earn between 105 to $122,920. That's considered workforce income. Household of four. Normally, we start with a household of four. A household of one can earn between seventy-three thousand to eighty-six thousand dollars. That's the workforce housing group. And I think most of the presenters tonight stress it's workforce housing, workforce housing. We're looking at the higher income range, and that's the income we're looking at. Just FYI. So that answer that question for you. Right. That's what I was. Sorry. All right, Susan Oyer. Hi, thank uh, you, Susan Oyer, 140 Southeast 27th Way. Thank you for letting me speak here at the end because I didn't want to interrupt as we went through. So a couple of questions that I had is how are you guys going to be evaluating this? Is this a ranking system that goes to the commission? Are you throwing things out tonight and sending like the top two or three? How is this working? Um, I can answer that if you'd like, Anthony, or... Um, yeah, go ahead. I think you have a recommendation about how we need to score it, right? Yes, sir. You're, you're, the, the, the CRA Advisory Board, Ms. Hoyer, is simply going to be providing a recommendation of uh, their findings based on the proposals that they've been presented, uh, both uh, this evening and and then their their backup of the entire proposal that's been submitted not just the presentation and there is not a, a point ranking uh or any type of uh of point system that would provide a one two three four five the, the the this board is not an approval body it is a recommendation body so they will uh present as a part of their assignment to the uh, cra board uh, their recommendations which which may not even include one of the uh, applicants. It might be recommendations on overall analysis that they would like to recommend that the CRA board consider. Um, so they are they're really kind of free to uh, 
to provide the recommendations in a wide range. Again, you know, they can recommend things that they heard tonight overall that they would like the board to consider in the project, or they can recommend one uh, development uh, over the others based on the criteria of the RFP. Great, thank you so much. Um, my second question, uh, is it possible to get copies of these RFPs sent to me, please? Since I tried to find them online and couldn't find uh, them online. Cannot, at this point, uh, this point, no one in the public has copies no of the- No problem. Uh, that's okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. I, I'm just trying to stay on top of this, of course. Um, I, I guess I have another question because now um, proposal number two and number five have mentioned using modular homes, which I love the idea, but I know in the past there's been problems getting insurance for these. So I think that's something you all maybe want to look into is what is the insurability level of modular homes. And while I truly think it's a great idea, you know, even using, you know, the, the cargo containers for to build homes, I think is fabulous. It's a question on whether you can get insurance and what is um, the expected resale value, because I know modular tends to have a lower resale. You don't appreciate in value as much over time. And while I think these are gorgeous, I think that's something to think about. So I thought I would throw that out there. Um, my, my concern on, on group number three, the Canary Village, is they didn't present very much information on their financing, at least unless somehow I missed it. And that concerns me when you guys are trying to decide who to pick or who to recommend. Um, and I was very concerned with number five. While I, I commend their level of um, diversity on units, and and affordability um 73 units is not compatible in any way shape or form with that neighborhood nor is it compatible with anywhere remotely close to this and i think from what i've seen at the commission meetings everyone's looking to something that's um compatible that raises the quality of the neighborhood, that makes a nice transition from the town square headed north, makes it unique and distinctive and not looking like any other part of the city to make this a truly unique little spot. And I think the density overload of 73 units is just, you know, way beyond compatible in any way, shape or form, especially when you're looking at three story units across the street from one story little homes and i think that's an issue they also um have bay windows and i thought those were not allowed under code so that's something to think about i do very much like um option one with option the first option i i like the second group fox ridge capital and i like number four pulte group if my opinion matters in any way, shape, or form. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Oye. You had three minutes. I appreciate it. Um, any other public comment? Because I'm unable to see it wherever it's coming from. Uh, no, no, sir, there's not. Okay. Um, I have an opinion um, about what we need to do as a recommendation. Um, I like to kind of that you all kind of let it roll for a minute and then we can see where we go um, as far as what we want to do. I think that what we should do as a board is a recommendation that they probably proceed with pursuing one or two of these. Um, that is my opinion, but we need to agree, especially since everyone's here tonight. So let's, let's go ahead and try and agree. Um, I guess what I can do is I'll facilitate it. And um, even though we're not supposed to rank it, Mike, is it okay if I said to uh, lay out the top two and then we kind of go in, in that regard? Yes, sir. You you can run this any way that the, you choose to and the board agrees to, absolutely. Okay. Alan, do you, 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 you dare with me on that with the top two? You have to unmute yourself. 
and and no disco ball. <laughs> um, I believe that that I I believe our objective probably you know uh, is to uh, remain flexible and um, yeah proffer proffer what we what we've learned are our opinions. Um, <clears throat> that might be a way to do it. Um, I feel like we need to maybe give a little more depth to it, but um, um, I don't know how we do that as a board. Uh, besides, you know, uh, this is, they have a transcript of this. It would be nice to give them kind of like an executive summary, sure. You know, it's like, here's our thoughts and have fun, you know, um, because there was there was some good there was some good questioning and there was some good responses and there was good information to that. So I think the short answer, yet yeah, Anthony is yes, uh, you know that along with the transcript of what we you know got the, the transcripts. Who's gonna sit there and go through those? Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Um, here's, the, here's the only other thing, though, Alan. If we kind of leave it that open it's kind of like going out on a date with somebody that don't know if they want chicken or fish or shrimp or lobster like I, I want you to really know what you want and I want them to know what we want and, and I, I you know I, I want the chicken and the shrimp you know that's that's what I want <laughs> so um, I have an idea ahead, um, how does everybody feel with putting maybe um, some sort of a chart or something to give to the board, just saying things like, I kind of wrote down some notes um, of like price ranges, um, whether they wanted to have an HOA or not, um, things like that. Like, I put different notes for each of them, but maybe, oh, the number of units um, and then the price ranges within those units. Like for example, well, I'm not gonna give examples because I have to give examples to all of them equally, but, you're that was that was kind of my well my my idea like maybe I don't know how everybody else feels about it but potentially I know that the board may be very busy and maybe uh, as an as an advisory board maybe would benefit the actual board to provide there you go okay so here's, here's we've, broken, we've broken them down for you okay um, the theory board so you can see the various. Things oh, like kind of laid out for you, um, <laughs> and then so it would make it easier to look at each of them next to each other, right? So that's all in your backup as attachments. Um, so uh, has everybody looked at page four eleven? Four eleven, uh, one sec. Let me open that. Yeah. That's, that's kind of telling to me as well. Uh, what that is, is where they have a little X, that means they checked off the box, and where they don't have a little X, it says not provided, which means they provide it. We'll pull it up for you. We have a, uh, our sufficiency check is. I'm looking at my backup on a different screen. Uh, so, Anthony, I... I yeah, I think we could do that. I think that's one way to kind of communicate with the board that this is how we felt about the proposers. Um, okay, so unpopular opinion. Um, Got him. Unpopular opinion. Shrimp and chicken. I'm getting ready to make a motion. Forget that chicken. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, do you want ribs and brisket? You know, I mean, but I'm getting ready to make a motion uh, that we um, I like this off yeah. today. I like the idea of narrowing it down to help make the decision. So, yeah, like the shrimp, the chicken, but if you have high cholesterol, be careful. <laughs> Board, just as a reminder to you, the, the information that you provide as a recommendation tonight is going into the board agenda that's released tomorrow. So 
obviously can't get too in depth with the unless someone's going to work on that this evening and provide it to us tomorrow. <laughs> you you know what you what you uh, put together as a board to give to them. You're you're on a very small time. Uh, you're under a very tight time constraint. So um, that's absolutely needed tonight. Yes, your recommendation is needed tonight. Yeah, I and think we'll go with like page four ten to the board. That would be amazing because I mean, looking at a four hundred and twelve page packet can be very time consuming for people. So maybe emphasizing that page four hundred and ten has a lot of valuable information. I think would be great. And yeah, um, Anthony, I think you had a good idea as well as Alan. Like maybe picking top two, you know, regards to your to your choices if you guys want to do I don't that. want to lead anyone in a direction that I'm leaning and that's what I'm trying to avoid and I don't I, I don't but I guess everyone here is, is can make their own choice I I do have a, a very solid position on what I think is the best choice to be honest um with the stipulation but Karen what do you have for us what 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 is, what is your where are you standing with it Oh. Oh. I was kind of leaning more towards expressing our feeling of the project feel and how it's going to best represent what we kind of need in the area as per se one over the other, but more like the feel of the community. I have a couple preferences of what I feel could be worked with and maybe tweaked a little bit that would fit the most with the community and I think what they need. Okay. Um, well, uh, so I kind of like the <clears throat> the site plan of Azure, but the buildings of Fox um, and um, didn't quite like the last one from ace okay so as a as a vote here let's let's make it easy um i i agree with tom on ace that i i'm not in favor of what that was presented as far as a site plan however even with that being presented as a site plan shh, even with that being presented as a site plan i don't know that what they're doing can't be modified so it's like because it, i'm sure if we told them hey ace come up with something different they'd be like sure what you want i build you whatever you like you know i'm sure each of them could <laughs> but that's not where we are now so i guess we have to uh weigh what we've seen right mike yeah what's your you're, you're giving an opinion on what's in front of you Yes. Mike, please not in her head. Mike's not saying. Yes, yeah, you're giving an opinion based on what you've been presented and the yeah. qualification of the companies and the ability to complete the project. And certainly, if you if you ordered them some way, I mean, you, you're talking about picking a, the top two. Doesn't mean that you can't go ahead and say we're four and five line, but you can also present with whoever you pick as your top two or three you can say why we like them, right? You don't have to just write the name of the company down to the board and say, yeah. recommend this order. You can say, we, we here's our kind of, here's who floated to the top for us, and and here's the top person, and here's why, and here's the second one. Right. This is what we, you know what I mean? You don't, because there's more meat to it than just the name of the firm as it is, because there's nothing about everyone that proposed tonight because you're not engaged in a conversation with them. You're not negotiating with them. So all the little details that you might like to see in the, so the end product comes after you've established who is capable of doing the project, who generally uh, uh, has responded, not just generally, but who's responded most specifically to the criteria of the RFP that you approved, that the CRA board approved, and that they had input on. So the, the the, the document that they have responded to has done all the legwork of, of that for you. Now, who responded 
most specifically to that that request for proposal. That's really kind of what uh, what you asked, right? You didn't ask for a proposal for a hotel. You asked for for a single family and and cash and detach. That's why you got this. So who 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 wrapped up their package? Which firms in what order? What have you that met? Met the you know met the intent of what you released to the public. I think that's a good way to do it, and you're on the right track for sure. Okay, um, we got that. Does anyone feel like, as far as what we're looking, at, what we need, and what was what's been agreed upon, as far as what was an RFP, the ACE development could be still in consideration at this. Point? Hmm. Alan, you yeah. uh, Consideration. Be careful. You're you're not determining consideration or non-consideration. You're recommending. Let me change my. Um, just be careful um, where you're going. Right. You're okay. you're just. Okay. I, I understand that. I, it's, it's sometimes I I I would have to run I for. Should, to make. Right. Yeah. Let's, of course. I'm not doing this every day. Right. Ace would be our least recommended. Is I think where where Anthony's trying to get to. Okay. Okay. Ms. Thomas, how do you feel? A, oh, I'm I sorry, Ms. Gordon. Go ahead. Simon, are, are these the developers also going to the CRA, or are we just finalizing who's going who's going to the CRA board? Recommendation. Uh, uh -huh. All of the, the CRA board is going to hear the exact same thing you heard tonight in the same order, and they're looking for you to act as the community voice another opportunity for input which is why you were created and yes they will they will be doing the same thing uh next two, tuesday night just about four days from now um, okay mike and board chair and everybody else um uh since this has to be um Quickly, quickly put together, and we we have it all fresh in our mind. I mean, what I feel like doing right now is doing a quick email to Bonnie, and saying, "Here's my number one. Here's why. Here's my number five. Here's why. Here's the ones that were okay." Uh, but you know, and and sending it to Bonnie and letting them. It, it may perhaps if we all do that, uh, it'll be beneficial to. You can do that amongst yourselves openly, but that that is not the procedure of the RFP, Alan. I understand uh, where you're going, but we there is no that is something you can do in the, in the public, so to speak. There's there's yeah, as, as a unit is you need to discuss all of those things. That's why we're here tonight to do. But I, I don't think that seven people sending us their own opinions on everybody at this point would would be efficient nor would it be viewed in the public. So I think we I would rather stick to uh, conversation about it, you know, and, and ranking about it. We can write down what you're saying at the end when you make your recommendation. Right. Well it's all on transcript right now. <laughs> and well, uh, I I what I want to say is that I want to commend all the five presenters you guys did an amazing job presenting your product and you all have some great product to offer and thank you for t thinking of point to you know about when when it comes to your project um however of course you all know that um we have to select something that doesn't mean any of you are not winners. you are all winners and have great projects and if we are ready to pick something right now I don't know if you guys ready, but me I actually look at one item that um, that kind of like stand up for me based on how the housing look and then being in Florida have different style of homes that most popular and I think we should stay. I mean we could look at that well me that's what I'm looking at what's popping in Florida or in a, in our area and how is it going to look? community yes something different good but you have to look at the pros and the cons to me honestly um i'm actually leaning towards one and i don't know if we were if we if we are listening or ready to get um whoever that we are 
individually decide, but I know beginning. Spirit of this. Thank you, Ms. Gordon. Um, Sherry, you have something? Sherry? Yeah. Um, if I, I'm going to, I'm just going to say, I'm leaning toward four and one because I think they're the most complementary of what we kind of need in that area. I like the idea of people having garages. Um, you've got lawn mowers, kids' bikes. You know, if we're trying to create a neighborhood, we need a place for them to put their stuff. And so I'm just going to go with overall design, overall feel, four and one. Our, okay. Well, I, we got would be my recommendation. Thank you. Ms. Thomas? Um, Hold on, Tom. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. Sorry about this. Sorry about that. No, I've been pretty quiet analyzing and looking, you know, at all the data here. And, um, you know, I concur with Sharon. And just for the, um, I'm looking at family friendly, right? So these family friendly neighborhoods and um, um, and basically the aesthetic too. So we can't forget about, you know, um, the aesthetic of the homes. And yes, we're in Florida, right? We're in Boynton Beach. So um i i concur with, with sharon um all the presentations were great but you know we have to you know make a decision quickly right to move forward give to the board so i concur so uh, one question before you mike do we give the name we picked or just by no we don't have to make a motion miss gordon and i can um, we we almost to the point of oh would you like me to make a motion no, we got to hear from Tom and Angela first. I didn't select yet. <laughs> well, what we have, in, I mean, what is also in your backup, which is on the screen now, is is in order of importance in the RFP, the five criteria on the right left hand side of the screen. So these are the these are the five things that were the let's say, most important uh, or some of the most important things that you were looking for. The first being uh, completing comparable developments, similar markets. Number two, experience and development affordable workforce housing attached and detached single family housing. Three, the project's adherence to the goals and objectives of the RFP referenced in the planning documents, et cetera, architectural design, requirements of the proposed project, residence amenities, public benefits. Number four, proposed financial terms, uh, development pro forma, purchase price, and number five, the proposed plan or use of local contractors and subcontractors. So if you just defaulted to these five categories of response, you know, as, as your guide, which there are many guides and many opinions you may have, but it, it gets right kind of, as Tweet said, it, it gets down to who matched up best with, with, the, um, with the, uh, the, the intent of, these, of the proposer, right, of, of the RFP. And if I may. Really, who has the experience, the know-how, and the design experience, and how do they engage the local um, citizens or you know businesses to, to accomplish this project in a timely manner? And how does it benefit the CRA citizens and and um, you know the city overall? That's what you're really looking at. And, and which one of these five has the most has captured the most? you know, of these criteria. And those are the ones that I think you're probably gonna, you'll see, those are your favorites that have, have risen to the top. Um, you ready to make a motion? I'm ready, but I got. I thought I had to hear from Tom. Um, <laughs> Tom, yeah. Tom, Tom, it's ready. <laughs> Very hard to say because uh, you know the the um, the layouts are, are one thing. The the buildings with the nice uh, porches and patios are another. Um, but they weren't necessarily one and four. Um, and I think one and four are probably the strongest in the building community. Um, and and so it. Um, uh, makes it a bit difficult to go ahead and pick. 
screws. Because I think, I think, oh, sorry. I think it was either three or four that <clears throat> looked the best, but they checked off the least amount of boxes. Okay, Ms. Cruz. Thank you. I want to thank um, everyone for coming in and presenting that. I know it can be a little nerve wracking, so I appreciate all of you coming in and doing all this hard work. Um, my pick at this moment, um, I do want to say one thing about ACE, um, and I do want to give them some credit because Thinking of it in a family Outside perspective, of, it's am I muted? No, I'm not muted. Okay. <laughs> Thinking of it in a family perspective, where most of the properties would be like two or three bedroom units, um, I think they saw an opportunity for people like myself. Like, you know, I'm I'm not part of a family myself yet at this moment, um, and I would be looking for something maybe like a one bedroom. So it's. I appreciate that they went forward and, and kind of like looked at the potential for all people um, in all different stages of life um, of how, you know, it, it could benefit people in the city to have maybe a one bedroom versus just two and three bedroom um, single families and townhomes. So I do want to give them props for that. Um, I would go with number four, the Palti Home Company LLC. Um, and the reason for that, um, I like that. I think 40 units is um, a decent number in regard to aesthetics. Um, I like that they have the no financing contingencies and they're not requesting any additional tax credits. Um, I like the cost. Um, they did mention 166,213, 261, and 308. So they do have like that range for different people with different income. I like that as well. Um, and they did mention they have an HOA, but they would make it affordable. Um, so that would be my pick overall. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Uh, I would like to make a motion that uh, we go through our board membership one by one and uh, our board members, their top two uh, by name, not by number. And we have that recorded for the CRA board. All right. So, mm -hmm. just, just as a quick clarification of Mr. Devlin's on comment, your checklist, the ones that have the, met, the most X's or checks are the ones that are the most compliant as to the quantity. So if you're looking at four, they actually responded the most um, positively or most responsive to what we asked for. So that um, from what I understand, Mr. Dublin thought that they were the least responsive. It's not. Okay. The X actually checks. Okay? Yeah. X or checks. Uh, yeah. Just as a clarification. I, um, yeah, I, I might have just misordered because uh, the, uh, it, it, I think it's Fox. I think it's Fox. Fox right, yeah, that was least confusing the number. Okay. This, All right. is, just, this is why I'd like for us to call it out by name not by number so we don't get confused give me like give me like 24 seconds alan and then i i can jump <laughs> i'll on. do it i'll start <laughs> okay one last question yes. uh, mike yeah. mr simon um yes yes for sure era board is choosing or only listening to proposals on Tuesday. yeah well the, the intent of the rfp is for the necessary make a selection of a developer to begin negotiations. So whether they do that at the next meeting or they take two meetings, I can't tell you, but the intent of the board to action to either reject all of these because they don't like any or to engage a, a developer that is risen to the top of their, of their selection and uh, begin a negotiation of down to the greater detail of the, uh, proposal then to get into a contract you know that's going to go probably back before you again and um and then back to them again so yes the intent is that they select the developer right. I, i'm good okay so alan I, I i want to try to make a motion that seems pretty unanimous or pretty good with everyone here but i didn't ask you what your point was because when i asked you, you just kind of said that you were just ready to make a motion to say where we were by board by, by, by board member. 
So my motion here is that um, I like to make a motion that we recommend as a CRA advisory board to the CRA board that they consider the Boynton Beach Cottage District Development LLC and the Pulte Home Company LLC as potential candidates for developing the site considered as the Cottage District. As a stipulation in that motion, I would also like that the CRA board in their selection does their best effort and job to try to con um, get the home builders make homes that not exceed the price tag of $240,000. And that is my motion. We have okay. a motion on the floor. Would you like to amend that motion? I'd like to, I don't want to amend it. I was just saying that we could just, you know, Let's vote on Alan's motion. Is there uh, is there is there a second? The second. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I like for the Starry Board to select um, Boynton Beach Cottage and Poultry. <laughs> okay, yeah, so we're I, all I, kind of saying the same thing, Alan. The, the only so thing we're not all saying the same thing, but go ahead. Yes, uh, I, I, I think we're actually doing it now. We are, it's what we've been doing the whole time. So I've heard from Go Lean, that's it. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I personally believe and feel that the uh, Boynton Beach Cottage District Development LLC and Pulte Home Company LLC most accurately represent what we've heard in the community and what the community would need in that area as for redevelopment. Beautiful. Tom? Um, I, I would simply like to add as your, I think that was the fourth one presented. Um, I agree with, um, number one. So I think we're, we may be unanimous with number one being consistent. Tom, Tom, Tom I got to stop you. You, okay. uh, the motion that Alan has presented that I think we're running with at this point, even without a vote or suggestion is that we decline to use numbers and for the record, use the name. Oh, right. So that's why I said Azure. Oh, okay. Azure. the third one. It's not the first. No, the first was, right. The first was uh, Boynton C Cottage, which I agree with. Okay. okay. I think we're, I think most agreeing with Boynton Cottage. Well, that's okay. fine. What's your Boynton second? Cottage and Azure, those are your two top? Yeah, Tom okay. likes it. You're I'm making a tally. I'm making a tally. Thank you, Michael. Um, Sharon, you were at uh, Point Cottage in Pulte. Yes. Okay. Point Beach and Cottage District and Pulte Homes. Yes. Okay, and Miss Cruz, you were at Point Cottage in Pulte Homes. No, I okay, only at Pulte Group. Um, looking at number one, uh, what did you call it? Wait one second. Um, in my personal opinion, I believe that the Boynton Beach Park District, although it's beautiful and it has a lot of positives, I don't see that as affordable housing. In my opinion, this is just how I view it. Um, even with two incomes in a household, that's getting close to the three hundred thousand dollar range, which you can really get in many other cities um and i don't want to say it in a in a bad way like i i like the program i like the idea i just thought that it would be important to focus on on providing if we're talking workforce housing or affordable housing i think the price range is a little bit up there in my opinion so because of that reason um unless they can try to make cuts somewhere and try to decrease that those prices for the residents, um, I would go, my option would be the, the Palti group, and that would be it for me right now. Just one? Okay. Unless, Sorry. of course, Sorry. they wanted to work on some sort of, some part of the budget and try to decrease the cost to the consumer. Okay, thank you, Ms. Cruz. Ms. Thomas? Thank you. Oh my God, oh. 
<laughs> Come on, girl. Right. Oh my God, I'm not on mute. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, it's on the record. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. This is really tough. Oh. Um, so my first choice will be uh, Pulte Home Company. And I like how they pulled in um you know, locals to assist with um, the community aspect and with providing, right, those um, local contractors and just the diversity, right, overall there. And the price point is on tax with workforce and um, um, there's a range, right? And it makes sense um, there. Now, I know in the beginning I stated, you know, um, the Boynton Beach Cottage District, but um, I've been look, looking at Azure and um, one thing with Azure that attracted me was um, they're, they're local, right? And um, they know Boynton, right? Boynton, you know, they're, they know the community um, as a whole and their average sales price, right? Is um, it's, it's a good, a good range. Uh, so I, I, oh gosh, it's hard. I can't say I have the top two, I have three. You okay. can. If that's fair, sorry, just mm -hmm. overall, because I just, you know, I can't take away that community aspect and the locals, right? And those local contractors. So the, the community aspect is my number, well, one of my um, my biggest, um, you know, um, points, pin in point. So Azure Equities and then go moving to Boynton Cottage District only because of the, the price range there, so. Right. Okay. If they could make a few cuts there, you know, and bring it down the price point down a little bit to meet the needs of that community, um, I think you know um, they'll be on point. But um, I have so Pulte, Azure, and Boynton Cottage District are my top three. As a question, Azure was Azure building modulars? I don't recall the mod. I don't recall them being mod modulars. If I'm correct, I'm sorry. Mike, were they, were they a no, modular? No, they were not. Right. Now, there is not uh, modular. Foxridge and Ace. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Thomas. Um, Ms. Gordon? All right. I believe Boynton Beach is still urgent. There's uh, plenty of projects coming, and all of the uh, presenters have a chance to come back again and present. <laughs> Moment, I will stick with Pulte Homes. There's only one singular choice? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, Alan, she originally said two. She had four to one. Alan? Uh, I would like to say that my top two um, presenters, and yes, thank you to everybody who presented because they all did a, it, it's hard work doing these things. Um, Pulte Homes and uh, Fox Ridge Capital. Might I just, just pick your mind? Would you be willing to tell me about the Fox Ridge? Just maybe I, I, I want to learn, you know, I want to know what you know, the ways yeah. of the force. Uh, well, let's see, uh, the architecture and the site plan. Okay. Those were, that's like your, that's kind of taking you over to say, I would, I would prefer this building. Uh, the architecture and the site plan, it's, uh, to me, it's important to have, I think it's great to have front porches. I think that's a community builder. I think it's uh, septed principles, um, you know, in surveil uh, informal surveillance on the streets. Um, and um, <clears throat> that was, um, that, that and the site plan. Um, uh, they, you know, they were they were all they were all good. But. 
Do we hear from everybody? So I, I, I think I did. As a caveat to that, though, and this is in a discussion. Um, and then I guess this, the board will give us what I would tally, and then we'll make a record. I do want to say though, as I agree with what you stated in regards to Fox Ridge, but there's a community aspect of this, and it's in the transcript. It's very, very clear. And I'm pretty sure that it was Fox Ridge Capital, and their statement was, "This is this is how I feel, Alan." And we've had some some fun conversations on other things, so you know that I'm genuine in what I say, and it's how I, I I legitimately just this is how I feel. Um, listening to them, listening to the presentation, I was reminded of what it feels like when when someone moves into the neighborhood, tries to change the neighborhood that doesn't necessarily know anything about it. And there are some key statements in their presentation that were very indicative of them not necessarily knowing Boynton Beach. Now, knowing that the project there 20 years ago doesn't really mean kill assault, but there were some key, it was it's it's key things that were attempted to be said that were way out of context that really let me know they were not in touch with where they were trying to do a project and i'm not all perfect points in beach by any means necessary but if you ask me the difference between if i want to give you carolina barbecue sauce or mississippi barbecue sauce i know what we're talking about in the conversation if that means anything to anyone so it it, it means a lot to me to uh for example when we picked the builder or we made the recommendation for the builder for uh, the mlk corridor we made that recommendation one of the things that we were talking about with mr Pollock, especially at that time god bless his soul was whether or not these people understood the community and if they understood what was going on in it and before and around it as, as much as i don't agree with bishop wright at this point, some of the things that he says, and I, I take some with a grain of salt, are relevant to how you ought to want a recommendation for someone that does work in your community. So I'm not saying that I want to in no ways align with any opinion of anyone, but the, the, the phrases that were used to or attempted to be used to make themselves seem more amicable to the board, I completely see that they were off base. And that's just where I was with Fox. They might build an amazing home, but just say that you can build an amazing home and not try to create and be something that you're not. You know, I, I don't sell pasta. <laughs> okay, so with that being said, Mr. Simon, can we have? Oh, Ms. Cruz. Sorry, I apologize. One last thing. Um, since everyone did give out a top two, I figured just to be the same, I might as well do the same. <laughs> So um, as previously stated, I do want to go with the Pulte Group as my number one option because of the affordable um, options, because for many different reasons. Um, my number two option would be Azure Equities. And the reason for that is I like that they're providing local employment. I like that they're uh, planning on hiring local subcontractors and local minority subcontractors. I think that's very important um, for, you know, to, to continue with the way that Connecting with the community, it's important. Um, and also the prices are, are decent within that frame. I mean, I, they, it is a pretty decent pricing as well. So that would be my number two. Um, and that would be it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Simon, can we get the tally of what no, we to do? Mr. Board Chair, can you clarify your, you know, Top two or three, what, can we just get yours again? Uh, Pulte Home Company is number one. Boynton Beach Cottage District Development LLC is number two. Okay. That's what I have. Okay. Yeah. Very good. So really, I mean, I think it's fairly obvious that the top, the top three are Pulte, uh, Boynton Beach Cottage District, and now Azure. So I, I believe that Pulte has... Um, on two more number ones, if you will, than, than Boynton. So I would say that if you want to categorize them as a one, two, three, it would be Pulte, 
Boynton Beach Cottage District and Azure, uh, or you recommend those three as your top and leave it at that. It depends completely on how specific you want to be to the to the board, but that that would be your top three. Thank you, um, oh. Alan and the rest, of, uh, Mr. Hendricks and the rest of the board members. Uh, I'm, I'm I'd like to make a motion that we make a recommendation to the CRA board of our top three in that order that they were ranked one, two, and three, which would be Pulte, Point Beach Cottage District, and Azure, but with the stipulations that they consider that whatever home builder they choose, try to build an affordable home that's under $140,000, and that they make sure that they hire locally for subcontractors, and, That, that's all I have. Any, anything else you want to add to the motion? Those are the most important things to me that houses were affordable and that they hire locally. Should we should we make two separate motions, um, Chair? Man, like um, one. I I don't know if we this. I don't know if we all discuss about the the price range limit. Um, but I think it would be. This this might be my 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 brain thinking about think certain things, but. When I would, uh, when I was in school and like I was like write, reading legal stuff, I would, you know, you know, part one and then part two separately. I don't know if we all discussed the um, the price range per se, um, but if we were, I would suggest maybe making uh, two separate motions, maybe one for the top three bits, and then a separate one would be for the pricing itself. If you guys wanted to add that. All right. And I'm yeah, I mean, so this is this is Tom. Could we not do the ranking and submit the three, and then put your criteria that they meet as what they should decide by? Gentlemen and ladies, the CRA board under we we wrote this. They wrote it. They they understand that we need an affordable product and that is of the highest of importance um then, but so they wrote all this stuff so we're not we're we're i i i don't think we need to make a motion to tell them what their job is they know what it is they wrote they wrote the the rfp the the staff wrote the rfp at the direction and the guidance of the cra board so they well understand kind of the parameters i think <laughs> we need to give them whatever feedback from our experience and uh, the proposals that we we heard, but it's it's not necessary to tell them what we think is the most important because they know they're the ones that wrote the RFP. Does that make sense? It does, and without a doubt, it makes a lot of sense. But board members, I'm sorry to, if I if I may interject. One of the things that, that I think is, is somewhat complicated for individuals that aren't doing affordable housing on a daily basis, and that is that the, the sales prices are less important than the income ranges that you're trying to attract to the development. So if you can say to yourself, we want to attract moderate to workforce housing individuals, there is a formula for these developers to price their house to accommodate a range of AMI. That's why you saw in Pulte's example, for example, they told you that a house priced for a home, a family that was making 40% or 50% of the median income. The criteria of the RFP didn't go that low. The criteria of the RFP said, low to workforce so 80 percent to 140 percent we want you to consider this range because we have other programs that really focus only on the very low so they were able to create a product you know in this particular case that addressed ownership at that lower level but i just don't want you to i don't think you need to as, as, as one of the board members just mentioned i don't think you need to specify a price because in your world, that price might not be the only price that's affordable for that that range of income. So don't don't. I would suggest you don't box yourself in to a number of, of 
price, but to a range of income that you want to attract. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Which was in the RFP. Yes. Yes, sir. But yes, sir. The range was. Yes, sir. Okay. Let me just, I, I think we got the motion. I think we can clean it up now. But just as a general question, I know everybody's kind of ready to roll and go to sleep or whatnot. What? Very important. It's a big project. It's very important. Great job. Is, is, it, is it at this price, at the at the home price that's going to be presented? Are we actually servicing the community? Even even I heard what I heard what what Mike said. It makes a lot of sense. But even when we when we put it at let's say the low category between forty seven and sixty three, are we actually are we are people in that community going to be able to afford a house? Well, I'm not. I'm not aware that you're building this just for people that live in the community that's there now. We I think are, you have but at the same time, the community, community at large. Oh, well, let's not use that. The community itself is home ownership is a great is a great place to be if you can get there, and yes, it, if if you can't get there. Can can we I have, make we a have comment? Ranges of housing in our community from thirty percent of median to one hundred and forty. That's what the CRA, as an entity, can influence. Right? We're yeah. influencing market rate all the way down to thirty percent of, which is very, very, very low income. So, so not every project can address all income at once. And that was part of the discussion with the RFP whether you wanted senior here, you know, or a mix of senior and something else. So you look at your portfolio and you look at the income range of your city, which I think the income of, of Boynton as a whole is, what is it, 659,000 or 61,000. So you're, you're, you're creating a, pro a project here that is addressing a, a, a certain range of income, family or ownership. And then you have other products that are addressing incomes that can't possibly qualify for ownership, but they're barely able to qualify for rental if you don't do something about it. And so that's where Ocean Breeze East or Habitats projects or MMLK project or other affordable housing projects where they're using tax credits or they're using large subsidies from other entities to drive the back end for the developer to actually be able to afford to build those projects. And in, in an affordable single family home ownership, it's 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 less uh, you're 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 trying to get someone to buy the house, and if you're not going to give forty or fifty thousand dollars in down payment assistance, then you have to drive these prices, as you say, very, very low. And you can't you can only build a house for so much, right? And so I, I think that uh, you're certainly absolutely as an advisory board can make a suggestion on what incomes you would like to see in these homes. Um, and, and, and that's, that's certainly your prerogative to do, which, which is, you know, that's, if that's where you're headed. That's fine. You can tell the board, we think that the price point should be for 60% in income. I mean, if that's what you feel like. Of course, of course. Yeah. Michael, can I make a point? Can I make a point? Um, Two very important things, especially because I am in real estate. You can barely rent anything, even East Boynton, for under fourteen, fifteen hundred on one of the older homes. The taxes, the insurance, and everything is much higher on a lot of those homes. So, even a two hundred and eighty thousand dollar new construction, the overall cost with the impact windows, lower insurance at least the first year they're going to have lower taxes is going to get them into a new home not a home that needs complete updating or that's a three bedroom one bath that's 275,000 because that's the prices over in East Boynton so if they can afford something built in 1955 for 260 to 300,000 they can certainly afford a new home which may bring more of the families back that have left East Boynton because now they're going to have a nicer choice to come back to the neighborhood. Okay, um, I would like to say something. 
I'd like for you guys to also consider, as the developers were talking, they were giving different options. And with the different options come different prices. So we cannot cap them on prices. Um, I, I think you guys are doing good on the suggestions that you have. And I think they are great suggestions. And then the rest will be to the to the board and the developers and the standard of the CRA the CD needs. All right. All right, I'd like to make a motion that we go ahead with the uh three choices that we have um and leave it without any I'll second your motion. Any opposed? I'm I'm sorry, was it to was the motion to submit the three names without a rank? Three names as they are without a rank because they're just the, the CRA board is going to receive all the information that we have and they'll be able to see who most who, who most um, adequately fulfilled the request mm -hmm. with the X's the same way that we saw. So there's no need to add any ranking system to them. I think it'll be pretty clear as to why we made the choices we made, one to them. In the second, in, in addition to that. It, I do agree. I don't sell real estate, so I couldn't tell you, but I, I just know that it's hard for folks to buy a house that don't have anything. But at the same time, there's a there's a there's a drawback to that as well because if you don't, if you're not trying, then you're not trying. So you, you right. gotta get to try. So, right. so uh, I think what I heard um, Michael say is that this this isn't necessarily intended to be the um least affordable uh project within the cra and there's other ones going on so that these might be slightly more expensive um than which is good we, for the overall community as a whole right and, and that you know and as we may have wanted um but to attract the what they're looking for it may be a little bit more expensive and um quite frankly then i think Azure would be a place I would I would you know, as we were talking it, I was I was thinking okay where would I which which of these places would I want to move to and Azure was was probably it so I, I'll go ahead with the motion of uh, the three names um, you know for with Azure for a lot of the reasons that were already mentioned um, uh, but I I would be in in favor of the motion to uh, use the three names without a rank. Okay, that was a motion that we had on the floor. Uh, Ms. Cruz seconded. So we're going to go ahead and any opposed? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries that we submit to the CRA advisory board the three companies being um, Pulte Homes, Boynton Beach Cottage District, and Azure without a ranking, but with as our three recommendations that they consider those. All right. <clears throat> That's great. So there's no old business. There's no new business. There's no future agenda items. And the only thing left is to uh, we, think tonight. We do have a closing, um, a, a public closing statement after you decide to adjourn. All right, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All, any opposed? <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Yes, all, right. all right, motion passed, okay. Bonnie, if you'd like to close out the meeting, please. Yes, as a reminder, a recorded version of this session will be posted to the CRA YouTube channel. To that channel are available on the CRA's website at pointingbeachcra.com. This concludes today's meeting on behalf of the CRA Advisory Board, the CRA Director and staff. Thank you for attending tonight's meeting and have a great night. Yeah, I would also like to reiterate the thanks to the presenters Thank for you the work that much. they did, as well as the discussion between the group. Thank you, everyone. Time. And Very just good. as a reminder, the board meeting will be on Tuesday, December 8th. Right. At and 12.30. And this video is available to the public board as well. Great. Bonnie, can can you send us all out an invitation to go to the CRA meeting? 
Yes, I will do that um, first thing in the morning. I love you. Thank Great. you. Thank you so much, everybody. It's very good. Happy uh, holidays. If we don't see you, happy good holidays. Good night. Bye. Bye bye.